puts him at the top of this class. Uh, he's got some awfully good qualities to him. He's got some, got a profile. He's got a look to him. But he wins this class simply when you look at him and evaluate this bull from the hawk down. We like the way he sits when he stands. You put him in motion. He's got a, plenty of length and stride to him. He's perfectly good at the ground when you talk about terms of flex and the way he can reach out and go. And when he wins the class, like I said, just on hands of terms of structure and getting out and go. They kept that we have in second. Matt and I really like him. Well, uh, you know, he stands here and profiles. Uh, he's got that extension. He's got that levelness of hip. He's got a lot of really good qualities to him. We just wish we could free this guy up there at the ground. He gets out and goes. He, he gets up on those toes a little bit on that rear end, and then that's what gets him beat. But still, there's just an awful lot of good to that bull. Just wish we could free him up as he gets out and goes. We get down to these other three. There's definitely some differences. Just, uh, you know, we find a Kiff that slides in here to third. You know, he's got some look to him. We like the way he lays in at that shoulder. Just wish we could open him up. Open him up in that heart shape and that rib shape. Make him a little bit deeper to get him to go any higher. We get these other two back here at this end. Our, our fourth place bull, we, he just gives up a little bit of that look, that pizzazz for us. And then we round out the class with one that's got a lot of extension. We like that about him. You know, a bigger stature bull just needs to be softened up. Just needs to be deeper in his heart and his flank to go any higher. Nice set of bulls. Let's give those guys a round of applause, please. Well, congratulations in Class 7B here in your Angus ring. First place will go to back number 153, Collison Pure Alpha, exhibited by Kara Collison, Rockwell City, Iowa. Second place will go to back number 155, EXAR Expressive, 0681B, exhibited by Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Third place will go to back number 150, VZR 24, Carrot. 2012, exhibited by Ryan and Bridget Van Z, Sioux City, I Sioux Center, Iowa. Fourth place will go to back number 148, VZR 24 Carat 2014, exhibited by Ryan and Bridget Van Z, Sioux Center, Iowa. And in fifth place, back number 160, HERB locked and loaded 0302. Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, definitely uh, a big, big blessing. Uh, honored to, to be asked to come out here and, and sort these Herefords for a few days. And uh, this class, again, it brings it to you. There's three different kinds of good in here, whether you look on paper or look out here. And just a lot of little different things and figuring where you're the most comfortable at. This one we're going to start with. I'd be the first to admit I, I want to change him up front in his front skeleton and redesign his shoulder just to shade. Uh, and for some, he may be a little quick, I guess, in terms of his pattern. But to me, that one puts himself the, the best together in terms of his body, the type of muscle he has in terms of his smoothness. Sets really good on his rear leg and, and his rear feet and where they set there. And there's still some balance to that one. I still respect that one on paper quite a bit as well. One here in second, he's got pieces right now. Uh, huge hip. Huge back, really, really long and extended, neat in his neck. And, yeah, you can ding him a little bit on paper in terms of birth weight, but I'll let you more so decide what to do that if you decide to breed to him. My concern today, he's a little harder in his body, and he wants
wants to tiptoe out here a little bit and not be as secure in his structure and uh, for me to be comfortable with him, particularly off of his rear step. One to run here in third, if you can, if he's stout enough for you, if that one's open up enough for you, you can say, boy, from the side, that's the one you need to draw into. And I wouldn't argue with you a whole lot and thought about it a lot myself, but I really like to try to make cattle as, as dimensional, but keep it all organized and together. To me, that one gets just a touch narrow chested, greener there in his full rib and just needs more top shape for me to run with those two up ahead of him. But that's three nice bulls to start a bull show off. Thank you, Judge Callis. Winning our first class of polled Hereford Bulls is entry 108 PCC The Deuce, 0295H, exhibited by Joe Patrick. His weight was 1055. Second place is entry 106 MMM VH7 and 7H44, exhibited by Ashley Moore with a live weight of 1095. Third place in that class is entry 102 BCH Cochise 12, exhibited by Clay Huber, and his weight was 1028. We're now be bringing in class two, Polled Hereford Bull Calves, age range of March 10th through March 30th, 2020. And following this bull class, we'll go right into our spring bull calf division. Over here in your Angus ring, currently in the ring is class 8B. Weights on these bulls are as follows. Back number 163, weight is 1242. Back number 164, 1300. Back number 165, 1512. Back number 166, 1184. Back number 167, 1429. Back number 173, 1198. Back number 178, 1327. And back number 181, 1295. This will be your final class before our next division champions. At this time, we'd like to introduce a few of our National Junior Angus Board of Directors. Those are our youth that are in the ring wearing the green coats on the Angus side. Nick Pullman is your chairman from Prairie Grove, Arkansas. He's a sophomore at the University of Arkansas, double majoring in biochemistry and animal science with a pre-med option. Megan Pellin, the foundation director from Frederick, Maryland, a junior at Kansas State University majoring in animal science. Alex Cazatorto, director from Olathe, Kansas, a sophomore at Texas A&M, majoring in animal science. Walker McDermott, director from Wyota, Iowa, a junior at Iowa State, majoring in ag communications and ag studies. 
Josh Jasper, director from Lexington, Kentucky, an upcoming auctioneer and real estate agent. And Garrett Schuring, director from Thompson, Missouri, a freshman at Moberly Area Community College, majoring in ag business and animal science. For those of you sitting ringside, please put your hands together and thank our junior board that has been out here in the ring helping us with all of our shows today, and we'll see them again tomorrow. Over here on the Angus side, as we get into these January bulls, uh, you know, these guys are starting to get to that maturity level that uh, that we like to see. You know, we're, we're past that, that baby calf look, but we're not at that big mature look either. You know, these guys are yearling bulls, I think, from top to end. And as you look at these things, they, they've done what they need to do. They, they've hit that point in their life that they, they need to start looking like men, and they're doing that. And, and, and we like all these bulls for different reasons. But as a whole, you know, th this class kind of matches up on those terms for us. But we find a, a bull up here to start this class that, uh, you know, we like this guy. I mean, there's a lot of extension to this one. He's flat in that shoulder. He's extended up in that front end. He's really smooth in his overall makeup. Not the stoutest one out here today, but he doesn't need to be. He's got enough other pieces. And you look at him on paper and you look at some of the, the weight data, you know, uh, the, this one, uh, length is in weight, and, and he's got that. But more importantly than that, you put him in motion, he's right at the ground, and he just marks all those boxes for us to start this class. A bull that comes next, uh, here's one that, man, we really appreciate that foot and bone work underneath him. I mean, a big old foot, got some spread between those toes. We appreciate that about him. You know, when comparing him to that class winner, we just like to lengthen him out. Maybe extend that front end just a little bit. Maybe tuck that shoulder in just a little bit more uh, to be more competitive, but still an awfully good bull. The young, man, young man's bull that we find to go third. You know, he, here's kind of a, a big old burly dude that's, that's got plenty of rib and body to him. We appreciate that about him. He just gets a little bit plainer. He's uh, just plainer up in that overall front end, but a nice calf to find his way into the third. Matt went ahead and placed the other end of this class and, and certainly some differences in there. You know, we've got one that's coming here in fourth. That, you know, th there's a lot of bull there, no doubt. You can look at that paperwork and, and, and wait's the telltale sign there. For us to get him more competitive, he's exceeding that maturity growth pattern a little too fast for us. And then we just get into either some structural issues or overall mass and power to be placed any higher. Let's give these guys a round of applause, a good set of bulls. Well, congratulations here in your Angus Ring, Class 8B. First place to go to back number 178, Boyd Rainfall 0002, exhibited by Boyd Beef Cattle of Mazelik, Kentucky. Second place to go to back number 173, DAJS, the Specialist 030, exhibited by Katie Satry, Montague, Texas. Third place will go to back number 181, Jensen Virtual 003 FAF FCC, exhibited by Kel Allen Jensen, Plainfield, Iowa. Fourth place will go to back number 165, FAR Cowboy Logic 0105, exhibited by Fry Angus Ranch, Granville, North Dakota. Fifth place will go to back number 167, Henning Fresh Prince 0005, exhibited by Evan Henning. Janeville, Iowa, or I'm sorry, Wisconsin. Sixth place in that class will go to back number 163, Schroeder Classic, exhibited by Doug and Glenda Schroeder, Clarence, Iowa, Dan A. Wertherman, Durant, Iowa, and Allen and Pat Wertherman, Stockton, Iowa. Seventh place went to back number 164, Chestnut Point Taken, 180, exhibited by Chestnut Angus Farm, Pipestone, Minnesota. And eighth place in that class will go to back number 166, EXAR Mentor, 0341B, exhibited by Express, Ran Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Now currently in your Angus ring will be the selection of our champion reserve here in your winter bull calf division. In this division, your first place out of your first class was exhibited by Dawson Greg Johnson, Pipestone, Minnesota. 
out of Class 7B. First place was exhibited by Kara Collison, Rockwell City, Iowa. And first place out of Class 8, 8B, exhibited by Boyd Beef Farm, Beef Cattle, Mazelik, Kentucky. Another powerful class of, of Hereford Bulls we have over here. And again, very deep. And I, I don't want to be sound too critical on these things today. Uh, I know people are still utilizing these. And, and again, take it as a grain of salt, if you will, if it's working for you. Just kind of how I'm seeing them today. But it gets a little uh, c a competitive up here in these top three or four, just exactly what you want to fall for. To me, this one just put the best compliment of being a beef bull, being rugged, having some body to him, some testic testicles to him, big hip, big back, but yet they're still some balance there's still some symmetry to that bull and then structurally to me that bull's sound and still athletic enough out here you get him on the move I like to still modify his structure just as far as making him a, a unique or a really really good one I change his hind leg design just a shade set his hip and tail head in him a little differently but function muscle body things that we like to see in bulls I think he does well not gonna lie if this one just moved a little more accurate for me off of his rear two he's winning the class I, I like that one's look I like that one's presence he starts to take Take things to another level in terms of his neck set and where it's put on him, his body shape, the kind of muscle he has. I found a lot of really neat use for this bull just today. You can tell he's either favoring his left hind leg or just pushing a little more on his right hind leg than he needs to. I like to free him up and just make him a little more accurate there in that step. Bull, we come here next. I like his look. I like his presence. There's a lot of good between that bull. From the ground up, though, I want to stouten him up in his hoof and his feet. I want to change his shoulder angle just a shade there as well to make him more relaxed more appropriate when he gets out on the go, but still a lot of good and presence and quality to that bull. Again, very practical, very useful one here. Long strided, it's got some length of body, he's got some muscle shape, just a little plainer maybe in the way he can constructed, not as neat out of his rear leg in the way he utilizes it. Big husky one that comes next, a lot of bone, a lot of hip, a lot of width to him, just not as constructed in his middle as, much, as well as I like him to be. Want to just blend him together. A neat, promising bull here. Uh, again, I like his length of body, I like his look up front. Today he looks just a little drier in his body. I want to make him all, more opened up and quite a bit bolder all the way through. Big, big stout rascal here. Makes sense, though, when you look on paper. You do get just a little more concern in terms of his birth weight. And then one here, he's smooth, he's deep, just runs a little bit out of power here within this class. But nice competitive set of bulls. Congratulations, winning class two in the Hereford Bull Show over here is entry 117, WORR35B, Big Shooter 559H, exhibited by Jarrett Shane of Worrell Mason, Texas, Bull Wade 1124. Second place is entry 118, CH Ruthless 007, exhibited by Curry Herefords, live weight of 1030. Third place is entry 112, BR Kingston HO28, exhibited by Barber Ranch, live weight of 963. Fourth place, entry 116, DCF 02X PayPal 011H, exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, live weight of 1182. Fifth place, entry 114, CSC ROF 4003 Pearl Snap 51H, exhibited by Clancy Sweatman of Eastman, Illinois. Live weight of 1167. Sixth place, entry 113, ECR WF Gus 058, exhibited by Fawcett's Elm Creek Ranch from Re Heights, South Dakota. Live weight of 976. Seventh place, entry 109, SLC Mr. Harley HM16, exhibited by Samantha Lynn Campbell of Eaton, Colorado. Live weight of 1106. And eighth place was entry 111, LF366 Ringo 0091. Exhibited by Lorenzen Farm of Chrisman, Illinois, live weight of 1033. If you're following along your programs, those placings are 7, 8, 3, 6, 5, scratch, 4, 1, and 2. We're now exhibiting for our spring bull calf champion and reserve breed champion. Coming out of class 1 was PCC the Deuce, exhibited by Joe Patrick of Sarcoxy, Missouri. And coming out of class two, our class winner was WORR35B Big Shooter, exhibited by Jarrett Shane Worrell of Mason, Texas. Not going to prolong the time here. We'll beat you. <laughs> nice division of bulls here. A uh, good set of them, but again, you get your mind made up. It's made up. I like this pair of bulls that come out of that second class. We're going to keep them together. They'll represent this division. Congratulations to you.
I'm going to make sure that that's the last time Callis beats me to the mic, or beats me any time if I have my choice at it. We get over here in this division on the on the Bull Show. Uh, you know, Matt and I sat over here and we discuss and and cuss and discuss these guys, and there's definitely some differences. The the two that we found that we're going to use for this division will be the first to admit that you know they're not, they're not I identical they don't match but they're darn sure the two that for the qualities that, that, that they have and the, what we like about them are the two that we're going to run out there and you know they'd be the ones we go breed bulls to or breed cows to you know they're the kind that uh, you know maybe not match at the uh, perfectly to a t but they're darn sure they just, they have the most quality when you put those in, in in consideration and you add up that overall quality of what's out here for this division an awfully good set of bulls matt will go out and select your grand reserve for this division Back over on our Hereford side, division champion came out of class two, WORR 39B, big shooter, exhibited by Jarrett Shane Worrell of Mason, Texas. Our reserve division was CH Ruthless 007, exhibited by Curry Herefords. We're now bringing in class three, spring bull calves, age April 2nd through April 23rd of 2020. Well, congratulations over here on the Angus side in your winter bull calf division. Your champion will go to back number 153, weighing 1188, Collison Pure Alpha, exhibited by Kara Collison, Rockwell City, Iowa. And reserve champion will go to back number 178, Boyd Rainfall 0002, exhibited by Boyd Beef Cattle, Maislick, Kentucky, weighing 1327. Now in your Angus ring, we'll look for class 9B, Weights are as follows, back number 182, 1265, and back number 183, 1316. Would like to remind everybody watching the Hereford side of the arena that we will be alternating classes, starting out with that polled class, and then now we're on the Horn Spring Bull Calves, aged April 2nd through April 23rd. Just two entries over here on this side, but uh, you know, two bulls that we we like for different reasons. Uh, the bull we're going to go ahead and start with, you know, here's one that uh, you put him in motion. He stays truer in that top. He's softer at the ground, and he's stronger and you know leveler out of that hip. And we like him for those reasons. He's extended. He's really clean underneath. We appreciate him for for a number of reasons. Just a darn good bull to start this class. The young ladies that comes next, we appreciate that weight per day of age about him. We appreciate that center dimension to him, but one that just struggles and starts to roll up in that top as we put him in motion. Wish we could fix that about him, but still two nice bulls for this age. Let's give them a round of applause. Well, congratulations over here in your Angus ring, class 9B. First place is going to go to back number 182, DAJS Primo's Reflection 854, exhibited by Katie Satry, Montague, Texas. Second place will go to back number 183, Reco Sampson 9527, exhibited by Reco Ranch of Guthrie, Oklahoma. Now in your Angus ring will be class 10B. Weights on the following bulls are back number 190, 1065, back number 192, 1738, back number 195, 1656, and back number 196, 1621. 
After this class, we will be selecting your division champion reserve for our senior bull calves. Another good class, and again, a lot of variations and differences. But when they walk in, I think these two separate uh, pretty quick. Uh, as far as they get in your eye, they've got some some mass and volume to them, but yet still some quality. Uh, I think the unique thing about this, when we get back out here, whether they're on paper or live, to me, this is our, our best bull, most consistent in the way he puts things together. Good from the outline. I like his squareness of his top and the goodness of his hip. I like where his head and neck set. There's still some body dimension to that bull, and it's still one that's Condition-wise, pretty good uh, in terms of his composition. He's deceiving, though. He's one that's smooth muscle. You get behind him, there's a whole lot of width to that guy still and some uh, real, 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 real volume to him and still handles his feet and legs quite nicely. So nice bull that ends up leading off this particular class. What we have here in second, I like his softness of rib. I like his length of stride. And, again, he's not wanting to cooperate the most, but you can still his com see his comfort of movement is there. I want to open that bull up when you get right in behind him, though, and square him up out of his pins maybe there just a shade for me, a punch more just shape to that bull. But, boy, I like his softness. I like his ruggedness at the ground. This next two, I honestly go back and forth. And, yes, there's a whole lot more bull here in third in terms of your squareness and shape. I want to change his shoulder angle, maybe make him better off his back leg. And that's where I love this bull next and fourth. He's skinny. He's green, uh, you know, but that's the best back leg movement of the entire class. I just wish there was more from there forward to go along with him to make him more competitive today, just a little young and green and skinny behind. I still like the softness and easy fleshing look of the one that comes here next. Just want to change him off his rear skeleton a touch more for me, moderate him and make him a little neater there in his spine and his hip. But good class of bulls. Congratulations. Placing in class three Horn Spring Bull Kevs. First place goes to entry 124 BR ER Big Country 007, exhibited by Barber Ranch of Channing, Texas, and Edwards Ranch of May, Texas. His live weight today was 1118. Second place is entry 123 Purple Sleepy Joe 80H, exhibited by Purple Rain Cattle Company, Tulin, Illinois, live weight of 942. Third place is entry 127 W4 8130 Bankroll 101H. Exhibited by W4 Ranch, Morgan, Texas. Today's weight was 970. Exhibit number 126 had our fourth place, ECR Copper 0367. Exhibited by Fossus Elm Creek Ranch, Bree Heights, South Dakota. Today's weight was 853. Rounding out our class is entry 125, placing fifth place, S Payday 075. Exhibited by Sidwell Herford's Car, Colorado. Live weight today of 1049. Following your programs, the lineup is two, one, five, four, and three. We're now on class four, Horn Spring Bull Calves, those ranging in age from March 8th through March 28th of 2020. Over here on the Angus side, <clears throat> excuse me, over here on the Angus side, we get into these September bulls. Um, you know, something I'm going to bring up, Matt and I haven't really talked about uh, and something that I know in math the way I do and, and, you know, obviously myself, I don't care whether we're evaluating bulls or whether we're evaluating females. Uh, this is an age group that I like. I, I like fallborns. I, I think when you look at these bulls, you know, I, I talked about some of those Januaries earlier about getting past that calf look, but, but not uh, quite to that extreme masculine mature look as some of them older ones that we'll see here in a little bit. I think they it's an age group as a whole, and no matter what breed we talk about, that they still have some youthfulness to them. They still possess the good qualities, those that have them, and, and they just need to look at. And I think this one that starts this class does that for us. We like this guy quite a bit. When he stops and he profiles, uh, we're, we're one that's big on look, you know, uh, that, that's kind of the backbone of our program. They, they've got to have some look and they got to move, and this guy does that. 
We don't need to describe all the unique features about him to a T. Just simply state the fact that he's a good one, and he wins this class quite handily. Uh, an awfully good one to start this class. The bull that we have in second, we love that center dimension of this guy. You know, you talk about some rib and some body to him. We really like that about him. He's got some good footwork and and, and bone underneath him, we appreciate that. If this guy could just get out and move a little bit better when you talk about him in the terms of his top, I think, you know, he could be more competitive. But he wants to roll up in that top a little bit for us, and, and that's a concern. But a big testicular, big testicle bull that's big center bodied, and we appreciate that about him. The other two, when we get down here, I think it splits the differences between the two of them when you evaluate them on the front end. This third place bull, we like the way he lays in at that shoulder and the way he can just move out and function off of that front end compared to the one that rounds out our class. One that's a little bit steep in that shoulder for us today, but a nice set of bulls with an awfully good one to start that class. Let's give them a round of applause. Well, congratulations here in your Angus ring. Class 10B, first place will go to back number 190, MC Roundtable 9088, exhibited by Zachary McCall of Greenville, Virginia, and Sunrise Sunset Farm of Williamsburg, Indiana. Second place in that class will go to back number 192, Vision Southern Charm 9082, exhibited by Austin Wieselmeyer of Amherst, Colorado. Third place, we'll go to back number 196, MES Music Man, 903650, exhibited by Marjorie Ellis Adowski of Eagleville, Missouri. And fourth place in that class, we'll go to back number 195, Heart's Lucky Charm, 031Y731, exhibited by Elsie Hannah Rogers of Wilton, Iowa. At this time, we will be bringing in your first and seconds to select a champion and reserve here in your senior bull calf division. Out of class 9B, first place exhibited by Katie Satry, and 10B, first place exhibited by Zachary McCall. Jason said these uh, fall bulls are intriguing. Uh, they're right in the middle point of their life. You know, they're not the fancy little calves and they're not the big bulls that we're going to see later. But uh, this is our kind right here. Uh, this is the, the type and kind that we're going to look for the rest of the day and tomorrow. We're going to use this bull in the second place to him to win this division. Thank you. Well, congratulations in your Angus ring. Your champion senior bull calf will be exhibited by Zachary McCall and Sunrise Sunset Farm with MC Roundtable 9088. And reserve champion senior bull calf will go to Austin Wieselmeyer Amherst, Colorado with Vision Southern Charm 9082. Both of those bulls came to you out of Class 10B. Another pretty solid class of bulls here. And again, two more powerful bulls that maybe are built a little more uh, to my liking in terms of their, their width and, and shape. And then you put them in the motion. And for me, it's not close in terms of just the angularity, uh, the way this one puts himself together. I, I like his look up front. That's a masculine stout skull bull, but that still lays into his shoulder in the right manner. Head and neck comes out of the top of his shoulder in the right manner. I like where his knee uh, and curvature is there up front. Really, really neat back leg in this bull. And you get in behind him, big square upper pin and hip in this guy, and still one again, a little greener uh, there in terms of his condition, and I don't, I don't mind that because he still has something to go along with it. He's probably not as wide base from behind as the bull here in second. I'm not sure he needs to be. A lot of power, a lot of shape in this bull here in second. Very, very expressive in terms of his muscle. I mean, he starts big from behind his shoulder and goes all the way back in terms of his stoutness, and again, some might have a problem with his size, but I don't. I, I don't mind his moderate type there. For me, more so, it's his front skeleton. I wanted to 
relax him there in terms of his knee and his shoulder, lay it back on his body just a little more appropriate manner. A lot of give and take between these next two. Both bulls got some length of spine. Really all three that are left have some length of spine and some stretch to them. This bull seems to come just a little bolder and stouter maybe up top, but wants to close up down low just a shade more. Bull here next, probably a prettier made bull, if we will. It's got some length to him. I just want to stouten him up and make him just a little more rugged all the way through. Bull of clothes is probably as good numbered, particularly in the Cavanese department of any of them in here. I just want to see that bull redesign just a shade out of his hip, maybe accommodate himself just a little neater there underneath in terms of his body and his chest floor there as well. But that's a good solid set of bulls. Congratulations, winning class two in the Horn Hereford Bull Show. Entry 137, FTZS Fearless 002, exhibited by Fitz Genetics of Perry, Oklahoma. He weighed 1,238 this morning. Our second place is entry 135, KCW Cotton's Dutton 310H, exhibited by Caden Wilson of Creston, Iowa. His weight this morning was 1,113. Third place is entry 132, SHF Southall 82H, exhibited by Carson Fahey of New Windsor, Maryland. Live weight this morning was 1,268. Fourth place, entry 131, GCS Highlight 008, exhibited by Gene and Cindy Stillon of Cheyenne, Wyoming. This morning's weight was 1,098. And fifth place was entry 130, S Yellowstone 028, Sidwell Herefords of Colorado. This morning's weight was 1,084. If you're following along in your programs on class two, class, I'm sorry, of class four, that was Scratch, and scratch, scratch, five, four, three, two, and one. We're now exhibiting for our Horned Hereford Champion Spring Bull Calf and Reserve Spring Bull Calf. Coming out of class three was BRER Big Country 007, exhibited by Barber Ranch and Edward Ranch from Texas. He weighed 1,118. Exhibiting from class four was entry 137, Fitz Fearless 002H, exhibited by Fitz Genetics, and his weight was 1,238. Currently over here in your Angus ring is class 12B. There's one entry in this class, back number 201. Weight on that bowl is 2090. Tried to get Matt to talk this one because this is one I know he couldn't screw up with uh, having a single entry out here, but may maybe the next single entry we'll get him to do it. But, uh, it, it, you know, uh, it, it, getting into these older bulls, uh, you know, it, it's a little bit of a passion of my wife, Jenny, and I to, to work these older bulls, to, to feed these guys, to haul them up and down the road. Uh, it's something we like. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a single entry out here, but I think one that could stand some competition. Uh, no need in describing him to a T. I think those of you sitting in the stands can see the see the goods of this guy. You know, plenty of rib, plenty of body to him. Um, good feet and legs underneath him. Just an all-around good type of breeding bull. Look forward to seeing him back for division. Well, congratulations over here in your Angus ring. First place will go to back number 201, Lakeview Sandstone, 9229, exhibited by Lakeview Angus, Mead, Colorado. At this time, we'll now be looking for class 13B here in your Angus ring, our final class before we select our division champions in your intermediate bull division. Back number 203 weighs 2,100. Back number 204, weight is 2258. And back number 205 is 1806. Got a really good division here, very deep. And you can tell with the seconds here, there's some quality uh, amongst this group. I think these two are close enough, but yet different enough. We should talk about them just a, a bit. This one out of this first class, again, I like how neat he is up front when he's there on the standstill. Opens up very, very well in terms of his body. And there's some real true meat and muscle uh, in this guy in terms of shape and, and expression there as well. Length of stride is still very, very good. If you're going to pick and go back and forth between the two, uh, you know, you may modify him 
out of his hip and the way he drives his hawk ever so slightly when he's on the move there. Uh, but that's still one that, boy, uh, puts a lot of good together. And then if you're going to give one advantage on paper, he probably has that slight advantage in, in particular in terms of his, his birth numbers. Bull here that comes out of the second class, maybe he comes to us with a little extra. And you got to study through the hair just a little bit. But I think when you look at these two at the ground, I like his foot shape. I like his pasturing angle there as well. That's a masculine, rugged guy that, like I said, he still parks his head and neck at the right spot in terms of where his shoulder lays onto his body there as well. Big and square out of his hip. I like the composition uh, of both of these bulls. And if you're going back and forth between these two and you get right in behind them, maybe he doesn't stay as, as extra wide at his base as what the the one out of the first class does, but he probably handles the length of his hip and the way his pin set and his hawk design just a shade better. So I'm being picky. You can go back and forth. I think both these bulls are very, very, very quality bulls. I love to just take the halters off of them, turn them loose, and see what they really do, what's what's them fighting things and what uh, really belongs to them. But probably the one that just hits me a little more with a little bit of the, more of the extras is the one out of that second class for me. He's going to be our champion in this division, going to use that bull out of that first class to be reserved. But that's a nice pair of bulls. Congratulations, our division champion in the Horn Hereford Spring Bull Calf is entry 137 Fitz Fearless 002H, exhibited by Fitz Genetics, and he weighed 1,238 this morning. Our reserve division champion comes out of class three, entry 124 BRER Big Country 007, exhibited by Barber Ranch, Channing, Texas, and Edward Edwards Ranch of May, Texas, weighing 1,118. Now be bringing in class five, Pole Junior Bull Calves, born February 3rd through February 26th of 2020.
this class of bulls out here. Uh, the one we find to logically start this class, you know, he, he's got the look for us. When this guy's parked there, he profiles. He ties in so good at that next shoulder junction for us. He's upheaded. He's clean up in that front end. We like him when you look at him from there on back. You know, he, he's so level out of that hip. He holds true to himself as he gets out and goes. Uh, just an awfully good one to go ahead and start this class. Our challenging two are these here in second and third. Uh, a lot of good things about these guys. Some differences, obviously, in person, but some differences when you look at them in paper. Uh, it comes down to there's just more bull here. Uh, more weight per day of age, you know, more muscle. Uh, he, he's thicker, he's stouter, and we appreciate that about him. I will admit, you know, I, I, I struggle with this guy when we put him in motion. Uh, he can get out and go, but he's kind of a little bit all over the place when he gets outside himself and on those rear wheels and wants to roll on that front end. And I think that that's due to the, to the point of those shoulders and the, and the spread that's in there. But the muscle and mass allows him to slide into that second spot. You know, you talk about a smooth shoulder, uh, a long-sided type of bull to go third. We like that about him. We just wish we could give him, give him more of it. You know, we wish we'd give him more top, give him more hip, give him more lower stifle, uh, but still an awfully good bull. Uh, interesting trio of bulls here. I'm going to give them a round of applause. Well, congratulations in your Angus ring. Class 13B, first place to go to back number 203. Hill Valley Reckoning 931, exhibited by Samuel Paul Henderson, East Troy, Wisconsin. Second place to go to back number 204, Hortzman Secret Society 961G, exhibited by Larry and Joe Hortzman, West Lafayette, Indiana, and Ridge Cattle Company of Nancy, Kentucky. Third place in that class will go to back number 205, K Bar D Bulldozer. 47G exhibited by K Bar D of Redmond, Oregon. At this time in your Angus ring, we'll be bringing in your first and seconds to select a champion reserve out of your intermediate bull division. Coming in out of class 12B, first place was exhibited by Lakeview Angus, Mead, Colorado. And first place out of class 13B, exhibited by Samuel Paul Henderson, East Troy, Wisconsin. Here on the Angus side, uh, you know, with, with the numbers hadn't been really high in this particular division, but uh, the quality has sure been there. Uh, once again, we're going to go with a bull that fits me and Jason. Uh, this bull here is just so upheaded and, uh, you know, it's so good made. Uh, this is our kind. We're going to stick, try and stick true to that kind, and we're going to use a second for reserve. Well, congratulations in your Angus ring and in your intermediate bull division. Your champion is going to be exhibited by Samuel Paul Henderson, East Troy, Wisconsin, Hill Valley Reckoning, 931. And reserve champion intermediate bull is going to go to Hortzman Secret Society, 961G, exhibited by Larry and Joe Hortzman, West Lafayette, Indiana, and Ridge Cattle Company, Nancy, Kentucky. At this time, we'll be bringing in Class 14B here in your Angus ring. The weights are as follows. Back number 206, weight is 2029. Back number 207, 2064. And back number 210, 2187.
For those of you joining us ringside, we'd like to remind you that the 82nd Annual National Angus Bull Sale will take place this afternoon at 1 o'clock right next door in the Super Barn Sale Arena. Bulls will be on display starting at 1130. You may pick up a sale catalog at the Angus booth and visit with the American Angus Association Regional Managers if you have any questions. Once again, that's the National Angus Bull Sale starting at 1 o'clock right next door in the Super Barn Sale Arena. find a pretty logical class winner for us when you just simply evaluate him on hoof. And, uh, you know, th this is a bull that's got that profile look for us. He's high at the point of that shoulder. He's smooth when you look at him when you evaluate him from there on back. You know, level top, good out of his hip, sits down good in that tail head. Just, in, you know, the, the, the quality factor. Uh, not to overemphasize that, but there's just more true quality to that bull that wins this class. When we get into these other two, you know, the once again, uh, you know, we encourage everyone to go back and visit with these breeders because there, there's definitely some bulls out here that, that haven't rose to the top end of this class that could be used in some programs. They just two, These two just give up that overall quality to run with that class winner. Nice set of bulls. We can give them a round of applause. Well, congratulations in your Angus ring, class 14B. First place went to back number 210, STCC Revolution 419, exhibited by St. Amont Cattle Company, Tryon, Oklahoma. Second place will go to back number 207, TRL Watch Appearance 9555, exhibited by Cornerstone Ranch Incorporated, Fort Sumner, New Mexico. Third place in that class, exhibited by 206, Cornerstone Ranch Incorporated, Fort Sumner, New Mexico. TRL, watch appearance, 9557. Really good class of bulls, and again, uh, lots of different kinds of, of good, and these two are not similar at all. Uh, and again, I, I think it, it invites, uh, I guess what's fun as a breeder, um, you get to make your decision after this is done today. Unfortunately for whoever's in second or third, mine becomes official today uh, for them, but that doesn't mean it's the, the ultimate answer. But these two, they're just different. I like them both. I like the quality of them both. But if I'm going to stay true to what my kind is, I like masculine bulls that have some shape, that have some range of motion athleticism to him to me this bull accomplishes that pretty well I do want to make it more consistent on his pasture and the way he sets I'm not going to deny that whatsoever you get in front of these bulls you get behind these bulls you get on top of these bulls there's quite a bit more bull there you stop and pose them that one still has a killer look this is the neat looking bull and if there's enough underneath the presentation for you you switch them because uh, I love his look I like his length like his presence that he has out here, very, very eye-catching. Still when it's sound, sets down on his back feet very, very well. A little more set to his hawk, maybe ducks under just a shade more for my liking. But for me personally, off either end, I like him a little stouter than what that guy is. But that's still a very, very useful and good bull. And then you get to this one, you say, well, why don't you use this one? This is the powerful one. Yes, he is. Lots of shape, lots of product, lots of punch in this guy. Heavy, heavy bone, big featured there as much, but almost too much to the point he gets just a little coarse all the way through. I like to tidy that guy up and just conserve him just a shade more and maybe that helps him get out and go in a touch more comfortable fashion. I love the power and shape of this guy here. Very, very rugged. Just needs to be a little stouter there at the surface and at the ground for me personally. I like the softness and practicality of the one here next. It's a little weaker in his spine. His loin takes away from his look and his presence is a touch. I like the look and presence of the one that, that rolls out here next. Just want to open him up quite a bit more. Very powerfully muscle one the young lady has has got some shape to him. Just want to redesign him up front in terms of angulation of his shoulder. And then the greener one here in the class that closes our class, lots of length, still has some turn and shape to his hip and his quarter. Just want to see him a little further along in terms of flesh to run with these guys that run out ahead of him. But impressive class of bulls.
Congratulations, winning class five is entry 147, CMCC High Point H002, exhibited by Moore Cattle Company in Bedell, Oklahoma, this morning's weight of 1162. Second place was entry 142, KCW Cotton's Yellowstone 220H, exhibited by Caden Wilson, Crescent, Iowa, today's weight was 1050. Third place is entry 141, SLC 561C, change of pace, 3H, exhibited by Corey Stump, Stump Landing Cattle from Columbia, Illinois. This morning's weight was 1,249. Fourth place is entry 146, 2TK, MKS 88X, 24B, Ribeye 6H, exhibited by Thomas Cade Boatman, Rockford, Illinois. This morning's weight was 1,246. Fifth place was entry 140, THA 66589, Ernest 004H, exhibited by Triple H Acres, Millers, Missouri, live weight this morning of 1173. Sixth place was entry 139, JDH AH Lincoln 106H, exhibited by Delaney Herfords Incorporated from Lake Bitten, Minnesota. This morning's weight was 1066. Seventh place was entry 157, Perks 5101 Commissioner 0009, exhibited by Perks Ranch, Rockford, Illinois. This morning's weight was 1236. And eighth place in that class was entry 149, SG, NMK, Kiwis Honor, H12, exhibited by Addison Koontz, Thomas, Oklahoma. This morning's weight was 1126. Well, we obviously uh, got the microphone out here, so we've got to be the first ones to tell you that, that there's some differences in these two guys, and I think you can see that from the stands. And, and, and there's things about both of these bulls that we like quite a bit, but there's some things we'd like to change about both of them. And when you sit back and you analyze them and, and, and go to looking at them, uh, that this calf that we're, or the bull, I mean, they're not calves anymore. These guys are getting to be the bigger ones. But uh, the one we're going to go ahead and use to win, uh, that this guy is – He's better in that front end. He's fresher in his overall makeup. He's flatter in that shoulder. And when you really analyze him, you know, and get behind him, he's truer and stronger in his hip. And we like that about him. I'll be the first to tell you, I, I really wish we could soften him up, open him up in that heart and that mm -hmm. rear flank a little bit. Uh, but still, the, the length and dimension, and dimension and the profile that he brings out here allows him to win this class. The bull that we opt to put second. Now, here's one. We like that foot underneath him. Big old foot, big old bone. We, we appreciate that about him. Appreciate the fact that he's got more flank than that class winner. But he's not as fresh. You know, he's not as neat and as trim up in that front end. And, and you know, rolls out in the top of that point and that shoulder a little bit for us to go any higher. But still, two awfully good bulls. I encourage you to analyze them yourself and determine which one of those you like the best. But uh, differences in those two, but two darn good ones. Well, congratulations over here in your Angus ring coming out of class 15B. First place is exhibited by back number 213. Connolly Dykeman Prowess exhibited by Connolly Cattle of Sulphur, Oklahoma. Weight on that bull will be 2,000. Second place in that class goes to back number 215, Chap Erica S.A. No Limit G65, exhibited by Erica Chapman, Tipton, Iowa. Weight on that bull is 1985. Next class in the ring will be class 16B. This will be your final class before we select our division champion and reserve in your junior yearling division. Weights on these bulls are, are as follows. Back number 216 is 2100. Back number 217, 2145. Back number 219 is 2026. And back number 220 is 2404.
think an interesting trio of bulls that we bring here uh, within this class. And again, uh, they're good. Uh, not not any of them the same. Uh, just interesting. A bull we bring out here to lead with. Uh, the inner judging coach in me wants to say he's not perfect enough on his left hind wheel and rides on the outside of his hoof wall. But then the breeder in me says, hey, that's never slowed one down much from getting on top of a cow. And so he's doing that pretty well. I like just the way he puts things together in terms of his extra shape and his width, the boldness of his body, again, where his neck sets in terms of his look and his posture there. And I think he's one for how he's built with that much muscle and that much width. He still handles himself adequately well. Yeah, you could modify him here in a place or two uh, in terms of just extra looseness, but I think, boy, he puts a lot of good together uh, in one particular package. These next two, uh, you could say there's some controversy between them because you look on paper and this one's numbers. I don't blow you away in terms of growth. Uh, I guess the way I try to approach that is I don't know what your cow herd looks like. Uh, I don't know what anybody's cow herd looks like, really, but I know you can interpret the growth how you want to. I know if we have range bulls that are built like him at the ground with that kind of looseness and that kind of flexibility, they don't go wrong. Uh, I like his shape. I like his width. Yeah, me too. I wish he was a little bigger in his kind. But we run out here next and third. If he moves good enough for you, you switch those two. That's where I ding him a little bit. He does have more growth and performance. I love his levelness out of his hip there. He's just a little shorter and choppier maybe in terms of his stride for me. This one was a hard one for me to figure out where he fit into the picture. I like his length. I like his extension there. When we get him out on the go, though, he gets plenty uncoordinated off of his rear two, rolls up in his back, and just doesn't look the same standing as he does on the move, at least from a comfort standpoint. Big middle stout made one here. Just gets a, a little uncoordinated for me, too, in terms of his structure, and he's just a little rounder uh, there off both ends. A long, long-sided bull that's got some length and extension to him. I just like to accommodate that with a little more softness and, and middle rib dimension, but really a nice set of bulls. We're here on our Angus side as we're starting to get into these big guys of the show. Uh, you know, we find a bull to start this class that, that that's that's complete. You know, he, uh, you know, a lot of good to him when you evaluate him up there at that nose ring to the tip of that tail, uh, and we like those things about him. And where you know there's some comparisons here in, in our first and seconds, and uh, just try to see it, tell you how we see it. Uh, the front end of this bull that wins the class, when we talk in the in the terms of the shoulder going down to that knee, going down to the ground, and those feet, uh, is the difference. You know, we like the way this shoulder lays in a little bit better. Therefore, it ties into that knee a little bit and goes down to that foot, and he stays true as he goes out and goes and, and just sets, sets that foot down a little truer fashion for us. And he's more extended. You know, there's more extension to that bull. There's more length to him uh, when we talk about that spine and that he has. And, and so th those reasons rise him to the top. The bull we've got in second, when he stopped and profiled and puts things together, you know, he's got some look and, and some desire for us when we're just on the terms of eye appeal. But when comparing him to that class winner, I like to extend him out just a little bit. He gets a little bit compact for us, not in a terrible way by no means, but just in comparison to that class winner. But more importantly, when you look at him at the ground and see him coming at you, this guy wants to turn out on those toes a little bit, which ties into that shoulder being a little bit steeper. These two that come next, you know, there's a lot of good to both of these guys. Uh, just some things we sure enough wish we could change and fix on this one. The bull that's in third, there, there's some good to this guy. We like a lot of things about him. He ties in at that next shoulder junction good for us. He's got some extension. Where we get concerned is when we simply evaluate this guy on his feet. He, he's, he's got some issues down there on his toes and wish we could kind of clean them up and fix them a little bit to, to make him more competitive. The bull that comes out next, he does have an advantage over that third place bull on the terms of his feet. He's got more circumference and truer on that foot. He just gives up overall dimension. When we put him in motion, he wants to get a little bit steep in that back rear pasture, wants to get a little bit tight in his top. I just wish we could soften him up and open him up to be placed any higher. Nice set of bulls with a good one to start that class. We can give those guys a round of applause, please. Another nice division here when we get into uh, these poles here. And, again, really, really good set of them uh, as we turn back. Again, a really neat pair, a nicely presented pair that, that came out of that first class. I like the added meat and shape and product and width of the one that came out here. Again, not ideal in its pastures, but I don't think it's a, a functional problem necessarily either. And then the pair that came out of that next one probably couldn't be more opposite. I, I still like just the way this one ties together, how upstanding he is and still has some stoutness and squareness 
moccasin foot and ruggedness to him. So a little interesting conversation. You know, you start to think about the one that's second in that first class, and although he's not my kind necessarily, there's still a lot of good value to that guy that I can see somebody using. For me, though, just two of them that look like turnout breeding bulls here on the front part of this line, and of those two, one of them just a little harder to pick holes in. So this class two is going to be our champion here in this division. Class one will end up reserved. All right, back over here on the Pole Hereford side. Winning our division was entry 153 BRGKB Everest H018, exhibited by Bryden Barber, Barber Ranch, and GKB Herefords of Waxahachie, Texas, and Channing, Texas. His live weight was 1,320. Our reserve division was entry 147 out of class five, CMCC High Point H002, exhibited by Moore Cattle Company in Bedill, Oklahoma, live weight this morning of 1,162. Well, congratulations over here in the Angus Ring, Class 16B. First place went to back number 220, EXAR Fundamental 9186B, weighing 2404, exhibited by Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Second place in that class went to back number 216, EXAR Expressway 1079B, exhibited by Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Weight on that bull was 2100. Third place in that class goes to back number 217, VZR Diamond Jack 1905, weighing 2145, exhibited by Ryan and Bridget Van Zee, as well as Rowdy Van Zee, Sioux Center, Iowa. And fourth place in that class went to back number 219, Valley Oak Victory Lane 9009, exhibited by Valley Oaks Angus Oaks, Oak Grove, Missouri. Now in the Angus ring, we will be selecting your champion and reserve champion, Junior Yearling Bulls. Well, over here on the Angus side, uh, you know, once again, we have a, we have some really, really good bulls standing here. Uh, there's useful kinds for any cow herd and uh, any program here. You know, we're, uh, we, we know uh, we got a big day tomorrow, but uh, the bulls that we've seen today have been impressive. With that said, Jason's going to go get your grand reserve. And congratulations in your junior yearling bull division champion will go to back number 220, EXAR Fundamental 9186B, exhibited by Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma. Second place in that class, also exhibited by Express Angus Ranches. And reserve champion in that division also go to Express with EXAR Expressway 1079B. At this time in your Angus ring, we'll look to start with our next division, starting with Class 17B. This entry will weigh 2481. Catching up back over here on the polled Hereford side. Results for class six, of course, 153 BRC GKB Everest H018 was your class winner and your division champion. Second place was entry 154 GKB Double Your Miles 0422, exhibited by Gary and Kathy Buckholz of Waxahachie, Texas. Third place was entry 121 C1311 4013 Innisfail 0121, exhibited by Collier Herefords of Bruno, Idaho, with a live weight of 1401. Fourth place was entry 158 Perks 5101 Herdmaker 0004, exhibited by Perks Ranch, Rockford, Illinois, live weight of 1335. Fifth place was entry 156, So Blockbuster ET, Nelson Hershey Purebreds, weighing 1294 from Del Benito, Alberta. And sixth place was entry 155, SG KME, Honored Time H3, exhibited by Kyan Eck of Putnam, Oklahoma, live weight of 1355. Here in this class, again, a good pair of bulls. Again, just a little opposite in the way they're made. Probably sacrificing just a little power, though, but I like the flexibility and just the genuineness and usefulness of structure of the one we're going to lead off with. And, again, it doesn't hurt on paper. You look at him in, in terms of a Cavanese and, and comfort there, uh, really, really good. But, boy, he gets out and goes very, very well. One here in second does have the edge up top in terms of just big, thick top shape, big hip in him. Just want to re-angle him in terms of his shoulder and his front skeleton. And make him get out and reach a little more comfortably, but a good pair of bulls.
here recently uh, with with the whole corona thing going on we we've seen our uh, cancellations and, and discouragement uh, in everything that we do and my daughter, uh, a week or so ago, they were supposed to have a basketball game, and uh, the opposing team had too many health issues and couldn't hold that game. And I just told her that one scared off the, the, the their team scared off the rest of the competition, and that, that's why they didn't show up. And I, I'm going to use that as an excuse, uh, same sort of scenario for this deal. Uh, I think this guy scared off the competition. Um, it's a shame he's a single entry out here because this this guy's good. He can stand some competition. You know, you get these big bulls out here and. Uh, you know, I made the statement earlier in one of those classes that, that how my wife and I and our family uh, love showing these big guys. I mean, it, it, it's a passion of ours. It's something that we love to do. Uh, you know, there's nothing for me better than uh, on a cool, crisp evening, uh, you know, getting ready for a Denver or this year the Congress and, and out there feeding them guys and hearing those nose rings clank on that feed bunk and knowing that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, you know, that, that's something for me. You can call me a weirdo if you want, but that's something that kind of gets my motor going and is working on them big guys. And this guy resembles some of those things. Like I said, being repetitive, I, I wish he had some more competition because there's some good to this one. Uh, you know, for a big bull, he's fresh. He can get out and go. Uh, good hair coat to him. But, but you know, there, there's way more there than just hair. Just a, a high-quality, good type of bull. Uh, uh, be interesting to see him back out here later. Congratulations to a good, really good one at single entry. Well, congratulations over here in your Angus Ring Class 17B first place. So go to back number 221, Silveras Harris Primal 8525, exhibited by Hera Angus Farm, Brookville, Ohio, and Silveras Brothers, Firebaugh, California. Weight on that bowl is 2487. Next class in your Angus Ring will be Class 18B. Weight on this bowl is 2325. Back over here on the Hereford side, Class 7 results for the Horn Hereford Junior Bull Calves. Those were age range of February 1st through February 26th. First place went to entry 164 VCR 711E Convoy 41H, exhibited by Valley Creek Ranch of Fairbury, Nebraska. Live weight this morning of 1078. Second place was entry 166 GH 150A Headliner 499. Exhibited by Nelson Hershey Purebreds of Del Benita, Alberta. His weight this morning was 1270. Placings in that class were one, two, and scratch. We now have class eight, Horn Hereford Junior Bull Calves in there. We did move 161 down there for your programs. So uh, we have 161, 169, 170, all the way through 172. If anybody has misplaced or lost their phone, we have had one turn in up here at the announcer's stand. So come up and identify it and tell us it's your phone. Yeah, I don't want to be repetitive, but I guess we could just about say do, ditto off, off that last class. Uh, I, I think this division's obviously lining up to be pretty competitive. Um, single entry, that darn sure could stand some more competition. Not going to talk this guy to a T. Uh, we'll, we'll do that when we get some more out here to compare to. But uh, uh, folks, take a look at this one, uh, kind of like that last class winner, just another darn good one. Uh, excited and looking forward to getting these guys back out here. Congratulations. Congratulations over here in your Angus Ring, Class 18B. First place to go to back number 222, BNWZ Dignity 8017, exhibited by Austin Nowatsky of Michigan City, Indiana. At this time, we'll be bringing in your final class here of Angus Bulls in your National Angus Bull Show, Class 19B. Back number 224, weight is 2509. Back number 227, weight is 2636. Back number 228 is 2512. Back number 230 is 2480. And back number 232 is 2570.
Another good class of, of bulls here. And again, you start to nitpick these two. Uh, I think they are the two that softness, body shape, the way they're designed and put together you like. Start to study them at the ground, though. You start to see some differences. Uh, this one probably comes to you with a little more foot size and circumference. And I think his, his pasture angle is just per, uh, designed in a way that provides a little more flexibility there as well. Big and square up top. I like his added length and look and extension that he has there up front as well. He's a little weaker maybe right in there behind his shoulder relative to this one. We're going to sit here in second, uh, but still a, a good bull. I like the bull here in second. He hits you hard right off the get-go. Big, big, powerful hip and back in this guy. I think he's smooth and proportional all the way through. I'm picky on back feet, and that's where I get on him. He's a little smaller in his foot, and when he lands and sets it to the surface, he's just not as secure, not as uh, confident in my mind in the way he sets that uh, to the ground. Burley Bull here that's got some middle, he's got some stoutness, he's got some ruggedness to him. Just maybe a little plainer constructed relative to those two. Maybe he doesn't have quite the center body that those two. Same thing can be said for the one that comes here next in four. Extreme length. He's got some neat, neat pieces to him. Just wish he was a little softer, easier fleshing looking today. Same thing for this guy here. Stout, stout, rugged skull. He's got some real shape and some real meat and muscle in him. Uh, just want to see him a little softer, a little further along in terms of his, his body condition. But really a nice set of Bulls. Congratulations. Results for Class 8, Horned Herford, Horned Herford Jr. Bull Calves. Entry 172 wins the class, DCF 642Z, Dilly 002H, exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, Pell City, Alabama. His weight was 1,300 this morning. Second place was entry 170, C. 2052 Long Range 0074, exhibited by Collier Herfords of Bruno, Idaho. This morning's weight was 1318. Thirteen, third place was entry 161, exhibited by Nelson Hershey Purebreds, Del Bonita, Alberta, Canada. Fourth place was entry 171, SCC Cox Barbarossa 985, exhibited by Ryan and Robin Samso of Cloverdale, Indiana, live weight of 1289. And fifth place was entry 169, BSE 13 646 Super Freak G12, exhibited by Brad Shepard, Arapaho, Oklahoma, weighing 1185. We're now pulling in those class winners to show for Horn Herford Jr. Bull Calf. Representing our Class 7 was entry 164, VCR 711E Convoy 41H, exhibited by Valley Creek Ranch. And ex representing Class 8 was entry 172, DCF 642Z, Dilly 002H, exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, Pell City, Alabama. Here in this division, again, a, a nice set of bulls. This, this bull out of his first class, again, love his, his Cavanese number. Along with that, he's built like one in terms of just his structure and looseness is very, very good. Got a stout one behind him there. A pair of bulls that came out of the bigger class there, again, powerful, rugged made animals, just a little difference in the way they address the surface. We're going to keep those two together, though, out of the second class. They'll be our grand reserve here in this division. Probably tired of listening to me today, but uh, what I've said on the last couple of them single entry classes uh, uh, about what my family strives for when we look at these bulls and what we like and the passion we have for it. Uh, get down to these big guys here at the end of this. We're, we're not disappointed from those those single entries either. Um, th this is what we like. Uh, I mean, I get kind of crazy about these big guys, and I know I'm being repetitive. If you haven't figured that out already, I think you know I like the big bulls. Um, and then, you know, we'll compare them to some awfully good calves I know that are coming back here later. But when you evaluate these guys, first of all, these five individuals, and probably not to take away from the guys and the young lady that's on the end of the halter, um, but those in the back, um, a lot of credit goes to a team that puts this deal together when you talk about the big guys. Because uh, I know, and I know all too well, that uh, it's not easy. And keeping these bulls fresh, keeping them moving, um, they're at the age that, that we know darn good and well. They've gone out and they've done a little bit of breeding themselves, maybe been collected. And, and my hat's off to those individuals behind the scenes that they work on a daily basis to keep these guys where they are and to take those good qualities and just emphasize them. And, and this one that wins this class does that. Uh, this guy's pretty good. Um, you know, not, not to project into the future, but, uh, you know, we, we've got for ourselves and as Matt as well, 
we got a big next week ahead of us. Um, you know, Matt's been pretty hot and heavy in that Hereford deal already, and they've got some other breeds coming in, and we've got a, a big string of semis coming in, and, and we've got a big bull uh, that, that we're excited about. And uh, to have those guys at this point, to have them be able to move, have them fresh, and have all the right parts and pieces to go with that, it's not it's a challenge, but it's fun, and it's fun to evaluate something like this, and this guy's good. We, we like a lot of things about him, and he wins this class quite handily and, and anxious to get him back out here for division. Uh, you know, just the freshness, the smoothness, the high quality that he has, he wins the class. And then we run into a few things as we get back here with these other four because there's some awfully good things about each one of them. They just run into an awfully good one to start. The young lady's bull that's next, uh, certainly like that sense to mention to him and when you compare him and that third bull you know the testicular shape and development they have is, is, is where in my opinion they need to be you look at them underneath they're clean sheath they've got good feet underneath them there's just more extension and balance to this calf or this big bull that ends up second compared to our third place third place bull we like him for the stoutness you know there's plenty of muscle to that guy you look behind him really strong behind his shoulders he's big topped he's got plenty of dimension from viewed from behind just run into a couple of those that just have a little more eye appeal to go any higher but still an awfully good one you get down to these other two you know it, it's a shame we got to be a fourth and fifth because there's some awfully good things to these guys the bull that's fourth you know we, we like the extension to him we like that footwork underneath him he gets a little tight for us behind the point of that shoulder to go any higher Higher, but still a good bull. The one that rounds out the class, a stout, powerful type of bull. We just wish we could soften him up, maybe not make him quite as round so he could go higher in this class, but still an impressive lineup. Look forward to seeing the class winner back out here for division. Back over on the Horn side. Coming out of that last two classes, our division champion was 172, exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, Pell City, Iowa. That was on DCF 642Z, Dilly 002H. Our reserve division champion was entry 170, C 2052, Long Range 0074, exhibited by Collier Herfords, Bruno, Idaho. We also had class nine coming in exhibit. That was entry 174, LF 4111, screenshot 9228, exhibited by Logan Bryant Rhodes of Paris, Illinois. His live weight was 1244. Currently exhibiting class 10, Pole Senior Bull Kibbs. Well, congratulations over here in your Angus ring. Your final class here in your National Angus Bull Show will be Class 19B. Placings were as follows. First place was back number 224, Silveris Forbes, 8088, exhibited by Chris and Sharon Sankey, Silvera Brothers, and Rockin' S Ranch, Incorporated. Weight on that bull was 2509. Second place in that class went to back number 232, Laughlin's Marvel, 1801, exhibited by Kenneth Hartzell, Joseph Mather, and Walbridge Farms. Third place in that class went to back number 228, Evans Paycheck, 86, exhibited by Brad Eldon Evans and Pitts Livestock. Fourth place in that class went to back number 227, WCC Chips F6, exhibited by Wilson Cattle Company and Wooden Shoe Farms. And fifth place in that class went to back number 230, Connolly Popeye, 8250, exhibited by Fly and G Ranch and Connolly Cattle. Currently in your Angus ring, we are selecting your champion in reserve in your senior yearling bull division. Got another good set of, of bulls here on, on our pole side. Uh, impressive bull here leads off. Uh, you talk about muscle shape, body dimension, and still keeps himself very collected and good in terms of balance. Uh, you like this bull quite a bit. Really, really rugged in the way he's put together, yet still there's some style. There's still some symmetry to him. You could get on him a, a little more and say maybe he's got a little extra set to his rear leg, but, boy, he's sound. He's athletic to have that kind of meat and muscle in him. Really long-sided bull here that's probably got the edge in terms of just top strength and smoothness and layway he lays into the shoulder of this pair. But, Bob, that comes at the sacrifice and not being a stout and powerful all the way through. Want to set him down just a, a little more correctly there from hawk to ground as well. But that's a good pair of bulls.
Catching up back over here on the Pole Hereford side in the senior bull calf range. Class 10, entry 176, BR Cronk G036 wins the class. By show exhibited by Bryden Barber, Aiden Barber, and Riley Barber. His live weight this morning was 1,606. Second place in that class was entry 177. SLC, Mr. Cool Cash, GSP2, exhibited by Samantha Lynn Campbell of Eaton, Colorado. His weight this morning was 1,480. We're now on class 11, Pole Senior Bull Calves. Following this class, we'll go right into our Pole Senior Bull Calf Champion and Reserve Champion. I know we're not uh, to the grand drive yet, and, and I can't tell you how excited I am to to get all of them back out here because, uh, you know, th th this is what we strive for to get these these bulls to this point. And, and, and I, I try really hard when I'm judging a show to forget what just left the ring and, and concentrate what's in front of me, but I can't help but think back to the, the quality of some of those calves and... Uh, you know, just in hopes looking at those calves that, that, that will maintain that all the way to these big guys. And uh, my hat's off to you, Angus Breeders, because you've done that. Uh, it's impressive. And we'll talk about that a little more in depth here in a little bit. But, uh, um, you know, I, I guess I drew the, whether you want to look at it lucky or unlucky, to be the one on the mic to, to talk about this division, figure out what we're going to do here. And I don't need to prolong any more than I want to. But uh, first and foremost... These four individuals out here are good. They, they, there's, some, there's some good out here. There's some quality, and we like them. We talked about these guys being single entries and scaring off some competition, and, well, they got some competition when we come back out here. Um, just a couple little things that, to, to talk about these guys, just so you know what's going through our minds when we're t out here talking when, without the microphone, is this first one that comes out. Man, I really like that guy when you look at him just on that profile. I, I like all of them on the profile. I like all of them when you put them in motion. I like the strength that this guy carries through that spine. I like how he ties in at the point of that shoulder. Um, we're not, we don't need to compare on the terms of true dimension and, and, and rib shape and body because all four of these have it out here and, and, and they've got plenty for me. Um, if we're going to get picky, this one – and compared to a few others or a couple others, if we could freshen him up just ever so slightly and lay the point of that shoulder in just ever so slightly, I think this deal even gets tougher than it already is. And believe me, it's, it's tough. I mean, th this, deal's, this deal's tight. Uh, it, it, it's pretty darn close. But there's a lot of good to that one. That front end, that shoulder is the only thing we like to tweak on him. And when I say tweak, I mean just ever so slightly. We get to the calf that's behind him right here in the middle. This is the one, in those terms, when we describe these cattle, holds that advantage. He is fresher. He does lay at that point of that shoulder a hint better. Maybe not quite as powerful over his top, but still very similar when you talk about types and kinds and the quality that goes together there and a lot of good to him. You know, certainly like that freshness about him. A bull that's youthful still, even at his age. A bull that can move. Uh, and all these guys can move. And I appreciate that for these big bulls. And then we get our last class winner out here. This guy's pretty neat. He's the big guy of the bunch. He's the one that uh, I think that Thunderstruck song they just played is the reason he's out here in this division. He's going to win this division. Congratulations. Congratulations in your senior yearling division. Your champion will go to back number 224, Silveris Forbes, 80, 88. That is out of class 19B. Second place in that class went to back number 232, Laughlin's Marvel, 1801.
And congratulations, reserve champion in your senior yearling division. We'll go to back number 222, BNWZ Dignity 8017, exhibited by Austin Nowatsky, Michigan City, Indiana. At this time, we are going to look to bring in all of your grand and reserve division winners out of your Angus Bull Show. Coming out of your spring bull calf division over here in the Angus ring, champion went to Connolly Verified 0853, exhibited by Connolly Cattle, Sulphur, Oklahoma. Reserve champion in that division was exhibited by Silveras Brothers, Fireball, California, and Tri-T Farms with Silveras Convoy 0340. That was back number 121. In your winter bull calf division, your champion was exhibited by Karis... Collison of Rockwell City, Iowa with Collison Pure Alpha. Back number on that bull was 153. Reserve champion winter bull calf went to Boyd Rainfall 0002 exhibited by Boyd Beef Cattle of Mazelik, Kentucky. In your senior bull calf division, champion was exhibited by Zachary McCall of Greenville, Virginia and Sunrise Sunset Farm in Williamsburg, Indiana with MC Roundtable 9088. Reserve champion in that division was back number 192, Vision Southern Charm 9082, exhibited by Austin Wieselmeyer, Amherst, Colorado. Coming out of your intermediate division, champion intermediate bull was exhibited by Samuel Paul Henderson, East Troy, Wisconsin, with Hill Valley Reckoning 931. And reserve champion went to Hortzman Secret Society, 961G, exhibited by Larry and Joe Hortzman, West Lafayette, Indiana, and Ridge Cattle Company, Nancy, Kentucky. Coming out of your junior yearling bull division, champion was exhibited by back number 220, Express Angus Ranches, Yukon, Oklahoma, with EXAR Fundamental 9186B. Reserve champion junior yearling bull exhibited by Express Angus Ranches of Yukon, Oklahoma, EXAR Expressway, 1079B. And coming out of your senior yearling bulls, champion senior yearling bull was exhibited by Chris and Sharon Sankey, Council Grove, K Kansas, Silvera Brothers, Firebach, California, Rocking S Ranch Incorporated, Riverdale, California. That was Silvera's Forbes 8088. Reserve champion in your final division here in your National Angus Bull Show was exhibited by Austin Nowatsky, Michigan City, Indiana with BNWZ Dignity 8017. For those of you sitting in the stands, please join me in putting your hands together for all of our Angus exhibitors here at your National Angus Bull Show. Here in our poll side on the Hereford deal, uh, again, good pair of bulls here, and, and neither one of them moves ideal is what I like them to, but I like the body, I like the symmetry, I like the way this one transitions from his shoulder back into his lower body a little better. Still one you can get on top of him, I like his width and his softness there, and then at the surface, even though he steps outside of himself a little bit from behind, I still like the way his hind leg plants in terms of his foot and the way he sets there, so a little plainer maybe up front in terms of his chest, uh, got a little extra condition there, but just a, a good solid bull. Bull we run here in second. If, if he looked just like this walking as he does standing, I uh, switch those two because that one's a little cleaner and neater there up front. I like the crispness of his lines. I like the levelness and length out of his hip there. When we get him into motion though, he wants to roll up in his back tuck up in his lower body just to touch more. And although that one gets outside of himself, this one here in second maybe wants to close up just a shade more underneath. But that's an interesting pair of bulls. Real powerful one here. Lots of shape. Big, big, big monster pins in this guy. Really big over his top and, and still has some neatness to him. Just got to make the decision, is it a little too much in terms of just the coarseness of his shoulder? I like to relax his hind leg just a touch as well. And ladies got a really nice long-sided one here that's got a neat look to him. Probably as long-strided and loose moving as anything amongst this group, but probably at the same time just gets overpowered here today. Not the same kind of width we find in those ahead of him, but four nice calves there. 
congratulations. Results for Class 11 pulled senior bull calves. First place goes to entry 183B, 6077 Gettysburg, 9239, exhibited by Bowling Herefords, Blackwell, Oklahoma. His weight this morning was 1,571. Second place was entry 184C, 1311, Mr. Canada, 9327, exhibited by Collier Herefords, Bruno, Idaho. His weight this morning was 1,563. Third place was entry 180, DD Outer Banks 032, exhibited by Jalen Davis, Maple Hill, Kansas. The weight this morning was 1,684. And fourth place was entry 185, PCH George W, 601G, exhibited by Tegan Hames of Tuttle, Oklahoma, with the weight this morning of 1,338. We're now bringing in all of our class winners to show for polled senior bull calf champion and reserve champion. Well, back over here on your Angus side at this time, it is my honor to announce the American Angus Association 2021 Herdsman of the Year. Herdsman of the Year is an award given to an individual who excels at presenting an Angus show string to maximize the value of genetics, eye appeal, and overall presentation. Herdsmen spend countless hours both in the barn and in the stalls preparing cattle for exhibition. In addition, the herdsman manages staff and builds a positive relationship with current and potential customers. In addition, a quality herdsman is one who shows good character, sportsmanship, and goes the extra mile to help fellow breeders. This award is calculated from secret ballots that are cast by Cattlemen's Congress exhibitors. At this time, it is my honor to announce the winner of the 2020, 2021 Herdsman of the Year, Mr. Alex Bauer of Connolly Cattle Company. Congratulations, Alex, if you can make your way into the ring at this time to meet Madeline Bauer and Miss, Angus, Miss American Angus, Ellie Kidwell. We would like to present you with a belt buckle on behalf of the American Angus Association. At this time, we will turn it over to our judges, Mr. Jason Elmore and Matt Scass, to select your champion and reserve champion bull here at the National Angus Bull Show. At this time, please join me in putting your hands together to thank our judges today. Well, our time has, has come uh, as we get out here for the grand drive of this, uh, the, the ROV Angus Bull Show. And uh, to say we're impressed uh, is hands down an understatement. Um, you know, uh, and it's, it's no different than any other breed. Obviously, our numbers are going to be fewer in a bull show than a female show. Um, but being repetitive once again, uh, I love this part of it. I love looking at the bulls and, and trying to project these calves into the future and what they can do and analyzing those big guys as they're uh, out breeding cows or as they're putting up semen and, and the ability to uh, the people behind the scenes to put these guys out here in the ring. And uh, it, it's fun. I mean, Matt and I just right here real quickly was like, well, we're at that point of the day, but it's been fun. And, and that is an understatement, you know, the, the, it's been fun. It's been exciting. You know, we're, I'm not going to go through and talk each and every one of these individually. I'm just going to sit here and tell you that at that end down there, there's some awfully good ones. I, I think some, uh, you know, ones that, that a lot of programs can grab a hold of and run with. And you get here in the middle, um, man, there, there's some neat ones right there. You know, the, you talk about uh, projecting those guys. I think they're awfully good. You look at these calves. Uh, Man, there's nothing but a bright, bright future for these guys. Uh, I think the, the long term of these calves is, is, is pretty unique. Um, we glance over the top of these guys and look at those reserves. And, um, you know, more times than not, we've had to stand in that reserve division spot. And it's tough to stand over there. But, uh, you know, uh, this kind of a something I'm going to say that typically projects more to the junior deal than an open deal. But, man, you can't hang your head on, on anything that, that's being let in on a halter on that side of the ring either. I mean, the quality is, is awfully, awfully deep and awfully, awfully good. Uh, Matt and I are definitely looking forward to tomorrow. We think it's going to be an exciting day. Uh, it's going to be a big day. We're honored to do it. You know, there's definitely some things that need to be said on the mic that, that we're going to hold off and, and keep for tomorrow. Um, but right now we need to, hands down, and, and I ask everybody in this building, this side and that side, 
please give a round of applause to the people behind the scenes of this Cattlemen's Congress. It doesn't get any better. <laughs> Matt and I have both had the opportunity and the privilege to uh, tell a lot of cattle into this ring. You know, over the years with that Oklahoma Youth Expo, you know, we, we've followed a lot of them down that ramp. We've put a lot of them together back there behind the scenes. And, um, you know, we, we are in Oklahoma. No offense to everybody that's not in Oklahoma, but we're pretty proud of this state. We're pretty proud of this operation. Um, we have been, you know, amongst the barns a little bit with other breeds. And, uh, you know, ju just the, the talk in, in the barns and, you know, how neat this has been and how thankful everyone has been from I don't care where you're from. Uh, I have not heard negativity about this show, and, and it's, a, it's a freshness that, that we have love hearing, we love seeing, that this deal's been fun, and for me personally, you know, those on the podium, those behind the scenes, those in the office, uh, me personally, I want to thank you. You all stepped up to the plate, uh, what a class act event. Uh, I'm, my hat's off to you, I commend you for that. Uh, real quickly, you know, just, uh, I'll save a lot of it for tomorrow, but, uh, you know, I'm impressed with this show, I'm impressed with the breed, I'm impressed with the people behind the scenes, and, you know, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be out here, and I can't ever go without the opportunity in a public aspect to thank those that are important to you, and I'm telling you, there, there, there's an army behind me. You know, those guys back there that have been at the stalls, the ones that are at home, you know, we fought snow, we fought ice, we fought mud, no different than everybody else. Uh, I'll put those guys up to anybody. They, they've been a test for me, a test of time to, to stick with us and do what we do. And then my family. You know, there, there's a little speech I need to give tomorrow, and I'm not going to get in that to that right now. But, but my wife and girls, you know, uh, they're the reason I do what I do. Heck of a show, I'm going to find you a champion. Congratulations, your grand champion Angus Bull at the National Angus Bull Show here at the Cattlemen's Congress. We'll go to back number 224, Silveris Forbes 8088, exhibited by Chris and Sharon Sankey, Council Grove, Kansas, Silveris Brothers, and Rockin' S Ranch Incorporated. Reserve champion in that division, exhibited by Austin Nowatsky. And your reserve champion, Angus Bull, is going to be exhibited by Austin Nowatsky, Michigan City, Indiana, with BNWZ Dignity 8017. Once again, congratulations to all of our bull exhibitors, and we will see you here tomorrow in the Jim Norick Arena for your female show here in the Angus Ring. Back on the Hereford side of things, we'll wake you back up again over here. Uh, really a nice set of them uh, that we bring out within this division, that single entry that we didn't get the chance to discuss yet. Really neat looking one amongst this group. Uh, again, I like his outline. I like his silhouette when we get out here. He's very soft made, a nice back leg and, and good foot underneath him there as well. You get in behind him and, and compare him. Maybe he's not just as, as totally powerful and opened up, so you got to see where you are there. Uh, Bullet came out next class, again, muscular, athletic. He's got some shape to him there as well and then that pair of bulls that came out of that that final class I just like the softness and ruggedness of the bull we have here so with that I think there's still a standout here in our second class he's going to be our champion here in this division As we roll the, the second around that class, again, really neat in terms of just his length uh, and extension there, maybe not as opened up. So is the first one stout enough for you? Is this one probably pretty enough in terms of his chest for you? I like his body. I like his rib. I like his foot. I'm going to use that third class there on the end to be a reserve here in this division. Congratulations. Back over here in the Pold Hereford side, the senior bull calf champion comes out of class 10. 
Entry 176, BR Cronk G036, exhibited by Bryden, Aiden, and Riley Barber of Channing, Texas. His live weight this morning was 1,606. Your reserve division came out of Class 11. Entry 183, B6077, Gettysburg, 9239. He was exhibited by Bowling Herefords, Blackwell, Oklahoma, and his live weight this morning was 1,571. That will now take us into the Horned Senior Bull Calves. Those calved 11.23, so 12.1 of 2019. There's a single entry in this class. We would just like to remind all of our spectators here that the 82nd Annual National Angus Bull Sale will be taking place at 1 o'clock right next door in the Super Barn Sale Arena. The bulls will be on display starting right at 11.30. So in about a half hour, the bulls will be on display over there in the Super Barn Sale Arena, and we encourage you to come over and participate. You can stop at the Angus booth for a sale catalog and visit with the American Angus Association Regional Managers if you have any questions. Once again... 11.30, the Bulls will be on display and 1 o'clock sale time. Got a nice single entry to get this division started. And I think one that's got a lot of quality to him. I think one that's built fundamentally very, very correct in terms of just his feet and legs and, and where things point and go. I like the, the smoothness of the bull. And again, not overpowering in terms of shape of muscle, but you can't call that one light muscle by any means. He still has some width and has some substance to him. So nice bull, single entry. could definitely use more competition. Winning class 12 was entry 186, T&R Revival, G509, exhibited by TR Cattle Company, Glencoe, Oklahoma. Live weight this morning of 1,342. We're now bringing in class 13, Horn Senior Bull Calves, calved October 3rd through October 26th of 2019. Another solid pair of bulls here, and I just 
I probably prefer the more conservative size of this one that, that leads off this particular class. I like his moderation amongst this pair. Big hip, nice top bull that still has some boldness to his body. I like the way he lands on his back leg. I like to change him there in his knee and his shoulder, relax him and lay him back there in terms of his scapula and make him reach a little more. Long-sided guy here, big shape. A lot of extension to him there as well. Just maybe for me, starting to get just a, a little more daylight underneath him. A little bigger for my liking personally, but still a good, good kind of bull that's got some neat pieces to him. Congratulations. Results for Class 13, Horn Senior Bull Kez. First place goes to entry 189. C-Bar 1, Bailey Valor, 9354. Exhibited by Collier Herfords, Bruno, Idaho. Live weight this morning of 1,494. Second place goes to entry 188, DCLL. Tank array loaded, 79G4. Exhibited by Cooper Miller and Drury Miller of Newcastle, Wyoming. A weight this morning of 1,714. Now, now bringing our single entry class, class 14, Horn Senior Bull Calves. Following this class, we'll go right into our champion Horn Senior Bull Calf and Reserve Bull Calf champion. Got a nice bull here, good beef animal here. Just shape and, and, and body shape that he has and that silhouette and look that he has there up front. And you get behind him, there's still some man there. Uh, big and opened up in terms of his pin. Starts really good behind his shoulder and stays that way. Fairly comfortable there. You know, you've seen hairier legged, bigger legged ones maybe, but still he's very proportional in the way everything fits together and comes together on him. So nice kind of a bull. Congratulations, winning class 14, Horn Senior Bull Cavs, entry 190, BR 108. We're now bringing in all of our class winners to show for division champion Horned Herford Senior Bull Calf, coming out of class 12, 186, TR Revival G509, exhibited by TNR Cattle Company, Glencoe, Oklahoma. From class 13, entry 189, C Bar 1, Bailey Valor, 9354, exhibited by Collier Herfords, Bruno, Idaho. And our last class, 14, Exhibitor 190, BR 109, Catapult, Geo 32, exhibited by Barbara Ranch, Channing, Texas. Following division, we'll go right into our next polled early summer yearling bulls, class 15.
Another very strong division here, and again, a uh, single entry here up front. I, I still like him there at the surface, and the, what the, he does there, the way he comes up through his front end is very, very good, and the way he transitions into his body is nice. Get him out here on the stroll, sets him down, very, very comfortable, very, very good there as well. Both these bulls behind him probably have more muscle and in shape to him, but that's not my, my criticism of him. I like to set him differently out of his hip and through his pins and tail head, just a shade more there, but boy, I I think from there forward, there's a lot of good in that bull. That second class we have there, a lot of shape and product in that bull, big up high there as well. Again, a little leaner made, and that's okay. Uh, just still fits his kind, his demeanor there. I like his back leg and the way it sets. Like I said, we could just remodify him, just adjust him there up front. We'd like him even that much better. And the other single entry here, uh, again, lots of shape. Good beef bull here, a lot of product to him, but yet still there's some look and there's some presence and masculinity to him. Again, maybe not as, as heavy bone, particularly down low, as what uh, maybe those two ahead of him are, but he uses his structure in a very loose and in a very good way to have that kind of muscle and bulk there up top. So neat conversation. Uh, to me, it's down between two of them. One of them hits me as no, no offense there, just a little bit on the cute side. And the other one looks more like a beef bull. Going to use the beef bull here out of this third class to be our, our champion in this division. That one here up front out of the first class to be reserved. Congratulations, your champion senior bull calf for the Horn Herford Division comes out of class 14, entry 190, BR109 Catapult Geo32, exhibited by Barber Ranch of Channing, Texas. Our reserve division comes back out of class 12, entry 186, TNR Revival G509, exhibited by TR Cattle Company, Glencoe, Oklahoma. Once again, congratulations to those. We'll now go into class 15. Back in the Pole Hereford show, early summer yearling bull calves calved May 8th through May 25th of 2019. The winner of this will also be our champion intermediate yearling bull division winner.
I think a good class and a very, very intriguing parables. Again, uh, they don't all have to be alike for me. I think these are two different kinds of good, and just depending on where you want to set your cows or where your cows are. But at the same time, my preference would be I like the body shape of this one quite a bit better. Uh, his softness and just his where he fits in in terms of his rib cage into the rest of his body just provides for more proportion, or just a little better balanced look to him for me. I like the shape he has. I still like uh, he's got huge feet that he sets down on. And really, when you get really critical, on structure and get in front of these two and watch them go, he probably stays more in line in terms of from knee to ground, doesn't pivot out, you're pigeon in at all, and just stays there good. Now, here's the hard part. There's some unique pieces and features to this one here in second. That head and that neck shape and the way he sets it up there high is very, very good. I love his back leg and the use and the way he uses that there as well. His pasture and angle is very, very good. And there's some real honest shape to this particular bull. For me, I, I'm having a hard time figuring out where I want to call him fresh, where I want to call him just a shader on the hard side. I just got to have more middle in him for me. But I'll let you make that decision too as you go ahead and choose which one you want to utilize. They're different. They affect cows probably in different ways, but I think both of them make quality animals. What we have here next and third, I like his softness of his body probably a little better than one we set ahead of him, just not the same kind of quality look and feature we find in those, particularly as you study him up front and underneath. Then we got a bull here that's, again, he's probably as, as chiseled in his front as any. I like the length of his spine there. Just one that gets just a little bit bold there in terms of his hawk and the way he sets it to the surface. I'd like to provide him with a little more softness to him as well. But good pair of bulls, interesting pair there up top. Congratulations. Results for Class 15 polled early summer yearling bulls. Winning the class and well as well as the division. Entry 196, UPS Entice 9365. Exhibited by Hoffman Herfords, Peter and Laura Atkins. Upstream Ranch and Delaney Herfords, weight of 2072. Second place in reserve division was entry 194, MYO 559 on time 927. Exhibited by Maya, Ranch, Maya Ridge Ranch, Lee and Katie Maya of Scott City, Kansas, KS Cattle Company of New Windsor, Maryland, Coyote Ridge Ranch of LaSalle, Colorado, and Foggy Bottom Farm of Keymor, Maryland. Live weight of 1,945. Once again, that was also your reserve division champion. Third place was entry 195, VOTDF Beth's Power Play 909, exhibited by Vermilion Oak Ranch, Abbeville, Louisiana. Live weight of 1,666. And fourth place was entry 193, SH 174E, E12 Frontier Storm G2, exhibited by Brad Shepard and Laura Ann Shepard of Arapahoe, Oklahoma. His weight this morning was 1,484. We're now into class 16. This is horned early summer yearling bulls, calved May 3rd through June 6th of 2019. There are two entries in this class, and they will also be your champion and reserve champion intermediate yearling bull.
Got another pair, a good pair here to, in this horn division. The one we're going to lead off with, again, uh, not hard to not, to not like him. He's really, really neat and, and eye-catching as he comes in. But I think past that, there's still some bull there. Uh, really, really big in his hip, good in terms of the shape of his top there. Uh, I like the way he utilizes his feet and his legs and the way he gets in terms of comfort there as well. So neat kind of a bull uh, there to run here within this class. And one here in second, just ran into a little tougher competition there. He's long side. He's neat up front. He's actually got some hip when you get in behind him there. Just doesn't maybe compare in terms of just volume and performance to the one we lead off ahead of him. But a good pair of bulls here within this division. Congratulations. Results for Class 16. Horned early summer yearling bulls winning the class and as well as the division. His entry 199, JCS Hondo 9612. Exhibited by Copeland and Sons, LLC, Nara Visa, New Mexico. Entry weight of 1,909 pounds. Second place in reserve division was entry 197, BS E13 7210 Extra Mile G3. Exhibited by Laura Ann Shepard of Arapahoe, Oklahoma. Weight this morning of 1,396. Once again, that is your champion and reserve champion intermediate yearling bull for the horn division. We're going now back into the pole division, class 17, polled spring yearling bulls, calved anywhere from March 2nd through April 6th of 2019.
Another really good class here, Bulls. And again, I think two or three that they catch me pretty quick, but really two that they get there very, very fastly. And then after that, to me, again, it's probably still not quite a question uh, which one I'm starting with. Uh, but that kind of body and volume into one and then still make his feet and legs appropriate like what his are, I think that's very, very impressive uh, on that one. And still one that as husky as he is, that one still can hold his head up there. I like the design there out through his spine and get in behind him. He's a, a truck still uh, that handles himself, I think, quite well. So just a nice kind of a bull. If you want to pick on him any, he's got a little extra there in his chest and floor. But as I've matured, I've got that as well in terms of my belly area. So I don't get on him too much for that. One here we have next in second. Uh, he's neat. He, he's hard not to like. He's hard not to see the feature on. Again, I guess breeding cattle long enough, even though I'm probably not old enough to say this, to me he can be a changer in, in a lot of ways. Just that kind of hip, that kind of look up front relative to that breeding bull that beats him, though, not quite as soft, not quite as appropriate in his hind leg usage and the way he sets it to the ground. But you can sure change some things, neaten some cattle up with that bull. If you want to say this one here in third, should beat him because maybe he's just a little softer and a little better in terms of his, his hawk usage. I wouldn't argue with you. Just a, a big whole deal. He's big hipped. He's good middle. Just from there forward, his heart, his forerib, his chest, his shoulder is where I want to redesign him and just put him together a little differently to make him come together even that much better. Boy, I love the upper skeleton of this one. He's huge out of his hip. I like the shape he has. Just a little harder belly maybe today, a little greener compared to his contemporaries there. Another long-sided one here that's got a big hip just want to soften him and maybe make him more conservative in his shoulder and then the one that ends up closing our class get, just gets overpowered I like his smoothness of joints probably a little better than some ahead of him he still sets in his feet well just not quite enough of him to run with the big boys ahead of him but a really nice class nice bull there up top congratulations results for class 17 pulled Hereford spring yearling bulls Winning the class is entry 207, Haroldson's United 33D, exhibited by Hoffman Herefords, Thedford, Nebraska, Haroldson Polt Herefords, Wawota, Saskatchewan, and Poplar Meadows, Houston, British Columbia. His weight this morning was 2,307 pounds. In second place was entry 203, TNR JPDL Exposure G34, exhibited by TNR Cattle Company, Glencoe, Oklahoma, live weight this morning of 1,995. Coming in third is entry 206, KJ TJ 745D, Agent G84, exhibited by Kevin Jensen of Cortland, Kansas, Wilcox family and family of cattle company of Spangle, Washington, and Jardis Farms of Gibson City, Illinois. His weight this morning was 2008. Fourth place in that class was entry 208, H L A R. Deborard, 9106, exhibited by Square G Ranch, Thomas, Oklahoma, 1,918 pounds was what he weighed this morning. Fifth place was entry 205, Crown Rural, 4702, exhibited by Elizabeth Crum, Anadarko, Oklahoma. His weight this morning was 2005. And sixth place in that class was entry 202, W5BCW Power Play, 2296, exhibited by W5 Hereford Ranch, Arp, Texas. His weight this morning was 1,791 pounds. We're now into Class 18, Pold Hereford Junior Yearling Bulls, ages of January 3rd through February 24th of 2019. Following this class, we'll go right into our division of the Yearling Bulls.
Another good set of bulls. Again, a, a trio. I don't think we have a problem with muscle and then a pair of them that are just a little different, maybe have a little more quality to them. And then, again, amongst this pair, uh, just a little more my kind. Uh, I'm a little more vertically challenged, I'll admit, but this one's moderation just fits me a little better in terms of his mature size, his body shape's good, uh, his smoothness is good. And I think he's still limber and gets out and go. If I'm going to get picky on him, I set him just a little more conservative there in terms of his front end structure and just to make him go a little bit and plant a little bit better there, but that's a, a lot of bull, a lot of middle. Still keeps himself together balance-wise. Big, more extended bull. He's got a little more frame, a little more leg to him, but he holds that together well. I love his, his front end and his neck extension. His feet and legs still work pretty appropriately there as well. He's got some shape to him. He's not as soft in his body and full rib as what may be your class winner. And for me, again, I just tone him down just ever so slightly in terms of his frame for me personally. Like this one's length, like his big pin width there as well. Maybe doesn't set to the ground and surface as comfortable as what those two bulls ahead of him. But really a, a nice trio of bulls here in this class. Congratulations. Winning class 18 of your pulled junior yearling bulls is entry 212 H Swanson 902. Exhibited by Zach Wells of Hamilton, Texas, Duff Cattle Company, Hobart, Oklahoma, and Linhard Cattle of Oskaloosa, Kansas. Bull weighed this morning of 2,243. Second place in that class was entry 209, K Gatsby 922. Exhibited by Sage Krebs, Gordon, Nebraska. The weight this morning was 2,334. And third place in that class was entry 211, GH Lunar Eclipse 324G. Exhibited by Nelson Hershey Purebreds, Del Bonita, Alberta. Weight of 2,066. We are now showing for the division champion coming out of class 17. Was entry 207, Harrelson's United 33D, exhibited by Hoffman Herfords of Thedford, Nebraska, Harrelson Pold Herfords of Wawota, Saskatchewan, Poplar Meadows of Houston, British Columbia. And representing that last class was entry 212, H. Swanson 902, exhibited by Zach Wells of Hamilton, Texas, Duff Cattle County, of Hobart, Oklahoma, and Linhard Cattle of Oskaloosa, Kansas. Another really impressive division, and maybe as deep as any in terms of quality on our first and our second. So I think awfully, awfully useful bulls. And again, I think you can see uh, I like to try to keep them soft, but yet still keep them athletic, keep some real bull in these things, and, and some just some, some width and substance to them. And amongst these two class winners, I think one of them just has put together a notch better in terms of his shoulder, his knee, and his reach up front. This is a darker colored bull out of his first class. He's going to be our champion here in this division. Going to use that class two winner to be reserved. Congratulations. Our division champion yearling bull for the Pole Hereford Show comes out of class 17, entry 207, Harrelson's United 33D, exhibited by Hoffman Herefords of Thedford, Nebraska, Harrelson Pole Herefords of Woboda, Saskatchewan, and Poplar Meadows, Meadows of Houston, British Columbia. Our reserve division comes out of the next class, class uh, 18. Uh, entry 212, H. Swanson 902, exhibited by Zach Wells, Hamilton, Texas, Duff Cattle Company, Hobart, Oklahoma, and Linhard Cattle of Oskaloosa, Kansas. We're now going into class 19, Horned Spring Yearling Bulls, age range of March 11th through April 15th of 2019.
another good pair of bulls, and maybe a little closer there. Uh, probably one of them you like just a little bit better in terms of way at the standstill, the crispness of his lines and the way he goes. We put him in the motion, though. I probably prefer the one we're going to lead off with. Just his extra lower body. He still has some shape to him. There's just a little more of a rugged look to that particular bull there as well. And again, he probably doesn't have the hair coat to just really set him off extra down low, uh, but still just a good, good bull that's got a lot of good function and, and pieces to him. This one, boy, when he gets him gathered and collected, can give you a really killer look. A really neat up front, big back leg that he uses extremely well. Still has some hip in him there as well. I'm just trying to figure him out there in his shoulder. I want to lay him back just a little bit. Maybe not quite as opened up in terms of the softness and boldness of his body relative to the one that leads out ahead of him. But two nice bulls there in that class. Congratulations. Results for class 19. Entry 214 wins the class. TKC Fortitude 9029. Exhibited by Tyler Coleman, Modesta, California, with a live weight this morning of 2065. Second place was entry 213, RWKLD Kid Rock 2296 9038. Exhibited by Sambera Cattle Company, Schulenburg, Texas, and Rock and W. Pole Herfords, Schulenburg, Texas. His live weight this morning was 1,819. We now have class 20 in the arena, Horn Junior Yearling Bulls, age range of January 4th through January 15th of 2019. Following this class, we'll go right into our champion yearling bull for the Horn Diversion. Another solid pair here, and again, a little more moderate one here, just a little more punch to him uh, there as well. I like his body shape. I like his length to go along with how stout he is and still has some look. Travels with some comfort of skeleton. You know, he's one of those long body ones that doesn't totally reach all, all the way up there and set it in his front stride, but boy, his added length, his stoutness that he has, uh, I think you like uh, very, very well. You know, you could get picky on him. Hind leg uh, set just a little bit takes away, but boy, uh, still a sound athletic one. It's got a lot to him. Uh, again, been getting a little harder on some of these bulls that are a little bigger frame. Uh, just in my country, maybe might not work as well, but if that's where you are, uh, you're still fine with it because this one's got some length. His smoothness is good there as well. Get him behind him. Maybe you want to square him up and change him out of his hip a touch, uh, but still a nice kind of a bull. Congratulations. Winning class 20 was entry 217 C bar 1 Candy Bell 9036. Exhibited by Collier Herfords, Bruno Idaho, and Kevin Frazier, Cochran, Alberta. His weight this morning was 2,239. Second place in that class goes to entry 216 GH Bolt True Grit 47G, owned by Parkview Park Farms, Fallon, Alberta, 
and Nelson Hershey Purebreds, Del Bonita, Alberta. His weight this morning was 2,098. We're now bringing in those two class winners to show for the champion yearling bull in the Horn Hereford division. Not a good set of bulls here within this division and, and probably as, as similar in terms of our, our, our class winners as what we've had. Uh, two bulls that you love just the width, you like the size they are, you like their body proportions, and, and still two bulls that are uh, very, very good in terms of just their athletic ability and way they set it to the surface uh, there as well. So you go give and take back on these two. Probably today one of them fits all the pieces together just a little more smoothly, probably has the advantage of laying into their shoulder and scapula, which just a little more smoothness there as well. So we're going to use this bull out of that second class. He'll be our champion in this division. Bull out of class one there will be reserved. A good set of bulls here in this division. Congratulations, winning our Horn Hereford Champion Yearling Bull Division is entry 217, C-Bar 1, Candy Bell, 9036. Exhibited by Collier Herefords of Bruno, Idaho, and Kevin Frazier of Cochrane, Al Al Alberta, Canada. Reserve Division comes out of Class 19, Entry 214, TKC 42-9029, exhibited by Tyler Coleman, Modesta, California. Congratulations once again to those exhibitors. We're now going into Class 21, Polled Senior Yearling Bulls, age range of September 8th through tw December 26th of 2018.
Another really good class, and I think an interesting trio and just a, a lot of give and take between the three. And I probably think what makes it hard is all three of these bulls are, are fit and put together extremely well. And so it's harder to break them down, at least from down here. Maybe it's a little easier up in the nosebleeds to, to see them when you're back off of them. But down here probably makes it a little more challenging uh, for me. But the one we're going to start with, uh, to me, he's just the, the complement of things. He probably, of these three, uses Hawk uh, probably the best. Uh, he's one that still has some hip in him. He's one that still, I think, proportions well. And where I like him better than the one in second is the way he goes from his shoulder into his four ribs just a little better for me. I like his moderate size there as well. He's not perfect in the way he moves, but to me, he still handles himself the most comfortable of the three. Hard one for me to figure out is the one here in second because is standing still in terms of body shape, moderation of size, the one in third fits more up here with the one that wins this class, and this one's just kind of a different one. But as you watch the way these two bulls are built and watch them go, to me he uses his hip and his hind leg just a little longer and looser. That's probably the longest fronted, neatest fronted one of this particular trio. Where I get hard on him is his heart and his forerib. He just collapses down a little touch more for me, makes him look a little piecey out here at times. This one here in third, if he moves just just a little better off of his rear wheels, I, I move him up there because that thing is packed full of meat. He's packed full of muscle. His body, his size is right for me personally, but for me, I just want to free him up quite a bit more, make him get out and move looser and more athletic than what we see uh, there ahead of him. But that's an interesting trio of bulls. You can shake them up a lot of different ways, but three good bulls. Congratulations, winning class 21 is entry 225 EXR Benchmark 8240, exhibited by DCD Land and Cattle LLC of Holt, Florida, and Express Ranch of Yukon, Oklahoma. His weight this morning was 2,343 pounds. Second place was entry 218 Next Gen 322 Bolt 29. Exhibited by Blake and Bryce Bransell of Endeavor, Wisconsin. His weight this morning was 2,413. Third place in that class was entry 224. Two, TK Perks 5101, Chuma 8184. Exhibited by Walter Walker McGuffey, Mendenhall, Mississippi. Perks Ranch, Rockford, Illinois. Stevens Herford Farm, Taylorville, Illinois. And Taylor Kendall Boatman of Rockford, Illinois. His weight this morning was 2,292 pounds. We now have class 22 polled Herford bulls. Two-year-old bulls calved 326 through 5-2 of 2018. Following this, we'll go right into our senior division bull champion of the Pole Herford Show.
Another nice class of big bulls here, and again, a lot of volume with these two, and you get to nitpicking on these two. I think both of them have some uh, soundness to them, especially to be carrying around as much volume and, and weight as what they're carrying. This one's just quite a bit smoother. Everything kind of transitions smoother, whether we're talking about the length of his neck tied into his shoulder, or from there back into his forearm, everything's just smoother. And then what's deceiving about this bull, you get him behind these two, he's actually the one that opens up just a little wider when you get right and directly behind them. Uh, maybe doesn't have that dominant shape and expression is what we find in this one. But I love his width. I love his smoothness. I love where he hinges uh, there. You know, if I'm being critical of him, I wish he would just go and really show off in terms of his structure and his feet and legs. Uh, but I think everything looks designed the right way. He sits down on his feet. I like his look and his smoothness. A lot of power, a lot of shape, a lot of expression in the bull here in second. Really, really big middle, really big back, and just a, a masculine type of a bull. I want to give him uh, probably just a little different set to his rear leg. I like to just stretch him a little. He gets just a little rounder and bunchier as you watch him go. He doesn't maybe collect himself and set quite as aesthetically pleasing and neat in terms of his hind leg relative to that one that wins the class. But again, good set of bulls. Congratulations. Results for class 22, two-year-old bulls in the Pole Hereford Show. First place goes to entry 232, KLD RW Marksman D87, exhibited by JMS Ranch of Carthage, Texas, Morris Hereford Farms, Carthage, Texas, Kirby Day Sims, Waxahachie, Texas, and Neil McCoy, Longview, Texas. His weight this morning was 2,785 pounds. Second place in that class was entry 227 NST GATH 54B Ray 30F, exhibited by Nicholas Torrance, Gabriel Torrance of Media, Illinois, and Stump Landing Cattle of Columbia, Illinois. His weight this morning was 2,699 pounds. We'll now bring in both of our class winners, entry 225 and 232, to show for the champion senior bull of the Pole Hereford Show. Really good division of, of big bulls. Our, our first class winner, I just I love his composition. Uh, boy, he's right in terms of his rib cage and design. I like his shape. I like his look and the way he's designed up front. And still, his, his feet look to go the right way there off his rear skeleton. Maybe toe my head a little truer there up front. And when we get out on the go, I like to see him just reach and step and remain leveler in his hip and spine. But boy, there part putting together, that's an impressive looking bull that still has a lot of value uh, to him. Him. The bull that came out of the class we just talked, again, big, stout, rugged bull that still accommodates that with a lot of smoothness. Uh, just love his, his extra length, his foot, and the way it sets down there as well, and things look appropriate in the way it fits together. Probably the difference between these two, as you study them out of their hip, there's a little more length of hip here. There's a little more length in terms of usage of his hawk and the way it's designed here in this bigger bull that wins our last class. He's going to be our champion here in this division and use that class one there up front to be reserved. But a nice set of bulls. Congratulations. Our champion senior bull for the Pole Herford division comes out of class 22, entry 232, KLD RW Marksman D87, exhibited by JMS Ranch of Carthage, Texas, Morris Herford Farms, Carthage, Texas, Kirby Day Sims of Waxahachie, Texas, and Neil McCoy of Longview, Texas. Our reserve division comes back out of Class 21, entry 225, EXR Benchmark 8240, exhibited by DCD Land and Cattle LLC from Holt, Florida, and Express Ranches out of Yukon, Oklahoma. Congratulations to those two. We'll now go into Class 23, Horned Senior Yearling Bulls. Those range in age from August 4th through September 11th of 2018.
Another solid class and pair, but a good bull here leads off this pair. Uh, talk about shape. This guy's got it. A lot of just real shape, real meat, real bull there. And, and I do like that, especially when you can keep it smooth, you can keep it collected, and still keep a good look in one. And that's what this one does uh, quite well. I like his rear leg design. I like the way he puts his foot down there. You know, he may be moderate for some, but again, the way I like him, I, I like the way he's put together and the way he puts things together. So nice bull here that leads off this class. Yellow bull here we go next in second i like his length i like how neat he is up front really smooth shoulder really clean jointed still and sets his feet down pretty well just not the same kind of just boldness and power in terms of skeletal width and still keep it collected as what your class winner does there but still nice pair of bulls Congratulations, winning class 23 was entry 235, BKBH Fastball F102, exhibited by Blakely Hayes of Ada, Oklahoma, and Buck Cattle Company, Medill, Oklahoma. His weight this morning was 2,286 pounds. Second place in that class was entry 236, GKB PRCC Sandstorm 8132, exhibited by Gary and Kathy Buckholtz from Waxahachie, Texas, and Prairie Rose Cattle Company from Sherman, Illinois. His weight this morning was 2,213 pounds. We're now on our class 24, which is the final class of the two-year-old bulls. Those animals calved between March 12th and May 3rd of 2018. Following this, we'll go right into our senior yearling bull, Horn Hereford champion, and following that, we'll go right into the champion and grand champion and reserve grand champion, Horn Hereford bull.
think an interesting trio of, of bulls here once again. Again, all three have got their use. All three, I think, have got a lot of value to them. Yeah, these two we, we start with are a little more alike, but for me, they're just a little more genuine in terms of just width and substance when you get in behind them. And then of these two, the one we start with, to me, puts his body together onto this skeleton in just a little better fashion. A little bolder there, a little more lower body to him. I still like his hip dimension. I like the way he is in his spine and his neck. He's got a little chest in him. You can tell there we've been pushing on him, but still keeps himself athletic and keeps himself together. I don't call him a composition problem because when you get him behind him, there's some real width to that bull there as well. This one here, I uh, thought about maybe floating him down and call him a little too lean, but boy, I, I like his length. I like his look. Again, I like his width as he goes from behind there, uh, there as well. He's not as soft body as either bull on either side of him, but I guess my deciding factor is when we get behind and in front of these two bulls we have left, he's the same from behind as he is is up front. This one here, you look at him, he's stout skulled, he's rugged, he's got some width to him. When you study him up front in terms of chest width, but from there back, everything else doesn't quite match for me. He wants to close up just a little more from behind maybe, to not view as genuine as I'd like him to. I'd like to maybe set him different in the shoulder, but that's an interesting bull there as well, probably being a little nitpicky on him, but that's a really, really good trio of them at the same time. Congratulations, winning our final class today. Class 24 of the Horned Hereford two-year-old bulls is entry 239, GKB, EJE, -E 6011, Bell Later, 8072, exhibited by K Gary and Kathy Buckholtz of Waxahachie, Texas, and Bar Oak Ranch of Tolar, Texas. His weight this morning was 2,426 pounds. Second place in that class was entry 240, GKB, EJE, -E 41A, 6011, Bel Air, 8069, also exhibited by Kath, Gary and Kathy Buckholtz of Waxahachie, Texas, and Prairie Rose Cattle Company of Sherman, Illinois. His weight was 2,299. Rounding out that class in third place was entry 237, KLD, RW Broxton, D89, exhibited by Kirby D. Sims of Waxahachie, Texas. His weight to this morning was 2,877. We'll now be bringing in our class winners from class 23 and class 24 to show for the champion senior yearling bull in the Horn Hereford division. Coming out of class 23 was entry 235, BKBH Fastball F102, exhibited by Blakely Hayes of Ada, Oklahoma, and Buck Cattle Company in Bedill, Oklahoma. Another good set of bulls that we bring back out here. And again, maybe a little more differences, but really good. I always consider myself pretty pretty easy to please. Uh, I like beef animals. They've got some shape that's good for me. They've got some body that's good. And if we can keep that athletic and be yet still uh, attractive and good in terms of their skeleton, I'm good there too. And I think y'all have done a great job all through the day of bringing cattle that resemble that and really allow me to be able to find something every single division in class that I can really tie to. I think the same thing out here very very competitive but yet there's still one for me that just got the edge and kind of how I like to build them and what I like bull here out of this first class he'll be our division champion bull out of class two there will be reserved but a good set of bulls Congratulations, our division champion comes out of class 23, entry 235, BK, BH, fastball F-102, exhibited by Blakely Hayes of Ada, Oklahoma, and Buck Cattle Company in Medill, Oklahoma. Our reserve division comes out of class 24, entry 239, GKB, EJE, -E 6011, Bella Later, 8072, exhibited by Gary and Kathy Buckholtz of Waxahachie, Texas, and Bar Oak Ranch of Toller, Texas.
All right, we're ready to actually jump into our champion overall bull for the Pold Hereford Division. Winning our first division in the spring bull calf was entry 117 WORR 35B Big Shooter 559H, exhibited by Jarrett Shane Worrell of Mason, Texas. Reserve division in that calf class was entry 118 CH Ruthless 007, exhibited by Curry Herfords of McAllister, Oklahoma. Coming out of our junior bull calf division was entry 153, BR GKB Everest H018, exhibited by GKB Hereford of Waxahachie, Texas, Bryden Barber of Channing, Texas, and Barber Ranch of Channing, Texas. Reserving that division was entry 147, CMCC High Point H002, exhibited by Buck Cattle Company, Moreland Cattle Company, Medill, Oklahoma. Representing our senior bull calf was entry 176, BR Cronk G036. He was exhibited by Riley Barber, Bryden Barber, and Aiden Barber, all of Channing, Texas. Reserve in that division was 183, B6077 Gettysburg 9239, exhibited by Bowling Herford Blackwell, Oklahoma. Coming out into our intermediate yearling bull champion, was entry 196 UPS Entice 9365. He was exhibited by Upstream Ranch out of Taylor, Nebraska, Delaney Herfords Incorporated out of Lake Benton, Minnesota, Hoffman Herfords out of Thedford, Nebraska, Peter and Laura Atkins out of T, South Dakota. Our reserve in that division was 194 MYO 559 on time 927, exhibited by Coyote Ridge Farm, Ridge Ranch, LaSalle, Colorado, Foggy Bottom Farm, Keymar, Maryland, Mayo Ridge Ranch, Lee and Katie Mayo of Scott City, Kansas, and KS Cattle Company, New Windsor, Maryland. Our yearling bull champion came out of entry 207, Harrelson's United 33D 36G, exhibited by Poplar Meadows, Houston, British Columbia, Hoffman Herfords, Thedford, Nebraska, and Harrelson's Pold Herford, Wawoda, Saskatchewan. Reserve in that division was entry 212, H. Swanson 902, exhibited by Lenhard Cattle of Oskaloosa, Kansas, Zach Wells of Hamilton, Texas, and Duff Cattle Company, Hobart, Oklahoma. And our champion senior bull in the Pold Hereford division was entry 232, KLD RW Marksman D87, exhibited by Kirby Day Sims of Waxahachie, Texas, Neil McCoy, Longview, Texas, JMS Ranch, Carthage, Texas, and Morris Hereford Farms, Carthage, Texas. Reserve in that final division was entry 225, EXR Benchmark 8240, exhibited by DCD Landon Cattle LLC from Holt, Florida, and Express Ranches for Yukon, Oklahoma. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for all of our division champions as they show for the grand champion of the inaugural Cattlemen's Congress, Old Hereford Show. Evaluating the cattle today has been Mr. Brandon Callis, a guy I know for a long time. Brandon comes to us from Minko, Oklahoma. Now, Brandon got his BS in Texas A&M, and then he went and got his master's at Kansas State University, where he was very competitive on the judging teams. He is the competitive teams coordinator at Redlands Community College over in El Reno, Oklahoma. He owns uh, BKC Livestock and raises Simital and Simital influenced cattle with his wife, Kelly his son, Braden, and his two daughters, Kylie and Cambria. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Brandon Callis for doing such a good job of sorting the animals today.
Folks, this has been uh, been fun. Like I started off uh, this morning, and just such a, a blessing to get it, be able to do this. Again, the, the staff here at the Cattlemen's Congress, uh, this is awesome. And I'll, I'll be selfish about this. I'm 45 minutes down the road, so I get to sleep in my bed every night, and I hope it stays. Uh, I, I love it. Uh, I love what we're doing here. These things right here are flat for flat awesome uh, from one end to the other. Uh, this has been uh, exactly what I anticipated uh, when I was first asked to do this. Uh, this was an extremely exciting moment um, for me uh, to get to do it. So it might not be there in the mountains, but to me, the cattle did not drop off any. Not going to talk each one of these. Uh, Y'all got other things to do and I got a family to get back to to get our stock up here as well so uh, but again really 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 thank you guys for the opportunity uh, can't wait till later in the week weekend here as well to, to get on your female show but really a rock star set of bulls I, I hope my comments weren't too critical for you. Uh, I hope you don't take those too critically. Again, do what you're doing, and you know how you're making money. This is just how I see them out here today. There's two or three of them that have separated from me. Uh, I, I'm a big one on structure from the ground up, but yet I'm a big one of not trying to sacrifice with when I don't have to. Uh, still keeping it smooth, still keeping them comfortable uh, and athletic out here. And I, I think we've got some impressive ones that do that very, very well. So let's put our hands together for all the bull exhibitors that have come in today. I'll show you two I like best. Congratulations, your grand champion Paul Herford Bull comes out of Division 4. I'm sorry, Division 5 right there. Haroldson's United 33D, exhibited by Poplar Meadows, Houston, British Columbia, Hoffman Herefords, Thedford, Nebraska, and Haroldson's Pole Herefords, Wovota, Saskatchewan. That brings in entry 212 to show for reserve grand champion Pole Hereford. Our reserve grand champion, Paul Herford Bull, comes out of Division 6, entry 232, KLD RW Marksman D87, exhibited by Kirby Day Sims of Waxahachie, Texas, Neil McCoy, Longview, Texas, JMS Ranch, Carthage, Texas, and Morris Herford Farms, Carthage, Texas. That completes the Paul Herford Division of the Herford Show. Bringing in now will be our Horn Herford Division. All right, ladies and gentlemen, stepping into our Horn Hereford Grand Champion Drive. Representing our Division One. our champion was 137, Fitz Fearless 002H. 
exhibited by Fitz Genetics of Perry, Oklahoma. Reserve in that division was entry 124, BRER Big Country 007, exhibited by Edward Ranch of May, Texas, and Barbara Ranch of Channing, Texas. Our second division, Junior Bull Calf, was won by entry 172, DCF 642Z, Dilly 002H, exhibited by Dry Creek Farm, Pell City, Alabama. Reserve in that class was entry 170, C 2052, Long Range 0074, exhibited by Collier Herfords, Bruno, Idaho. Our senior bull calf champion was entry 190, BR109 Catapult G032, exhibited by Barber Ranch, Channing, Texas. Our reserve senior bull calf was entry 186, TR Revival G509, exhibited by TR Cattle Company, Glencoe, Oklahoma. Winning our intermediate yearling bull division was entry 199, JCS Hondo 9612, exhibited by Copeland and Sons, LLC, Naravisa, New Mexico. Our reserve intermediate yearling bull was entry 197, BSE 137210 Extra Mile G3, exhibited by Laura Ann Shepard of Arapahoe, Oklahoma. Winning Division 5 was entry 217, champion yearling bull was C Bar 1 Candy Bell 9036, exhibited by Collier Herfords, Bruno, Idaho, and Kevin Frazier, Cochran, Alberta. Reserve champion yearling bull was entry 214, TKC 42. 9029, exhibited by Tyler Coleman, Modesta, California. And our senior yearling bull champion was entry 235, BKBH Fastball F102, exhibited by Blake Lee Hayes of Ada, Oklahoma, and Buck Cattle Company, Medill, Oklahoma. Reserve in that senior yearling bull group was entry 239, GKBEJE 6011, Bella Later, 8072. Exhibited by Gary and Kathy Buckholtz, Waxahachie, Texas, and Bar Oak Ranch, Toller, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for all of our division and reserve champion winners to, for the Grand Champion Show. Another really, really good set of bulls here in the Horn Division, but uh, I'll be honest, it's not as easy. Uh, well, once you get past the one I like to win, it's, it's not as easy trying to figure out where you want to go for two. And so if you don't mind, I'm going to go real quickly through these just to justify or, or talk about what, kind of what I see so you're not left guessing a, a why. Uh, the one out of his first division, there's a lot of neat stuff to him, and he would be one that, that's in contention. I, I like some of the extras that he brings forth. I like his hind leg and his foot. I'm in love with just the squareness of his pins and the length of his hip, the way he comes into this top line and upper skeleton and still has some rugged masculinity about him. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, if there's too much guesswork in terms of what he does body-wise down the road and does he continue just to open up and soften? I think he could, and if he does, he's got the pieces to be awfully, awfully, awfully competitive on down the road, and that's kind of why he's in the hunt out here. Boy, here out of the, the second uh, division here, boy, I just, I love just just the honest softness of this bull, his width is good, just the practicality of him, still good in terms of his feet there, gets just a tick plainer maybe, uh, starting to push a little more condition, if you will, and you can get harder on him, but boy, I still love just the fundamentals of that bull. 
One here out of this next division is another one that's a heavy contender here. Uh, and I'll be honest, if I can just get past his bone, I like him extremely well. Uh, that one's body and rib cage is so parallel, but yet so bold in the way he puts that onto his spine. I love the type of muscle this bull has. And to have all that, his neck set still good. Not only does he stand that way, he moves that way. And that's what I really appreciate about that bull. You know, just want to make him a little stouter underneath in terms of just his foot and bone. But boy, there's just a lot of back balance, a lot of width, a lot of squareness, and still he keeps things angled to me in an appropriate manner uh, there as well. Bull that came out of this next division, probably one of the truly loose made bulls amongst this group, or probably one of the greener made bulls condition-wise amongst this group. I like his look up front. I like the actual shape he has there as well. Again, just want to figure out where he belongs. He won that division going away. You get him back out here, is there enough just husk and softness when you get him back to these other ones? I'm not sure, but boy, I love just the way that one's built fundamentally at the ground and his look there. Bull that came out of this next division, long-sided, big hip bull. Uh, he's got a lot of look and presented extremely, extremely well. And again, for being as long-bodied as he is, I'm not sure we can ask him to reach all the way up there and set his front foot or back foot into where his front foot left, if that's unfair or not. But I like to just redesign his hawk if we're just commented on making him more elite. Want to change him there, but I sure like him. Then the big bull, pair of big bulls that come out of that last division, uh, I think are very, very good for being big bulls. They're athletic. They can still get out and go. There's some range of motion there. That one, Joe, if you know me, you know I like them stout. I like them powerful. I like them to move right, and that one does it very, very well. He was my easy one. He's going to be our champion out here in the horn division. Congratulations, your grand champion, Horn Hereford Bull, comes out of the senior bull division, entry 235, BKBH Fastball F102, exhibited by Blakely Hayes, Ada, Oklahoma, and Buck Cattle Company, Medill, Oklahoma. That brings in our reserve division, entry 239, GKB EJE 6011, Bella Later, to show for reserve. Bring that reserve division in, and again, a, a truly wide-made animal. Uh, very, very square. Again, very useful in a lot of things he does. If I'm being critical of him and you getting out here and getting picky, I do change him just ever so slightly in his shoulder and knee. He's so neat up front. I think, though, he, he kind of rocks forward just a, enough in his shoulder. Uh, it becomes a distraction, but, boy, I still like that bull quite a bit. It's between him and another one out here, and, and I'll just be honest, this other one just hit me hard. I, I love his squareness. I love his soft. I love his rib cage. I like his look. I just think he's a good bull. This one out of his third division is going to be the reserve. Congratulations. Your reserve grand champion, Horn Hereford Bull, comes out of the senior bull calf division, entry 190, BR109 Catapult GO32, exhibited by Barbara Rance of Channing, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together one more time for Mr. Brandon Callis and a fantastic Horn Hereford and Pold Hereford show. Be safe out there. Wear your mask, social distance, and let's have a great rest of the week.